I think it's right. I think we're live. Okay, who's got the boob pictures? Are we live? Who's got who's got the boobs? That was Darius' shot, wasn't it? Okay, I don't care. No, no, no. If you check Gilded, it's me. Just check uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. flavors of Nick Wyver's thread. Yep. Uh, oh shit, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get going. <laughs> that had such an aura of menace. Count Dracula, the propagator of this unspeakable evil. He must be found and destroyed. Chosen four messengers of death. Four horsemen of my created apocalypse. It's only a shell. Possessed and corrupted by the evil of that. You would play your brains against mine. Against me who has commanded nations. Dragon child. Murderer. Mucalator. Revenge is complete. Hello. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and good golly, Miss Molly. Welcome one and all to It's Only Talk and Roll, the movies, where today we talk about that magnificent British studio Hammer Film Productions I cannot take any credit for that opening montage because I made one myself and it was miserable. And I found about an hour ago that one on YouTube by a guy called Bramble. Bramble, and I've put his link in the... And also if he's watching this or ever does watch it, thank you, sir, for making that great montage. I borrowed it and I hope you don't mind. But uh, I thought it was a pretty good one. Gave yeah. Man, the music and everything is very cool. Yeah, I mean, I, as I say, I tried to make one and it, it was nowhere near as good as that. So I said, you know what, for once I'm not <coughs> really making my own montage. But welcome, one and all. Welcome to my wonderful panel, my panel of monsters. Some of them are more monstrous than others, of course. Um, but uh, thank you for being here. Um, Joe, how are you, sir? Good to see you. I am doing fantastic. Uh, if I was doing any better, it'd probably be illegal, boys and girls. I'm doing fine. How are you? Oh, I'm I'm great. Yeah, I'm absolutely um, discombobulated. I thought giving myself two weeks to plan this show would be enough, and I've barely done like one percent of the planning. I think I should have. I was There's I was fixing so to say too many <laughs> too many in that library. I think too many movies, too many people, too much great material i i've done my very best hopefully we will put on a good show imperatus certainly was a huge help and imperatus my friend how are you oh tired but good 
Indeed. I hope everyone understands what your avatar is today. They won't, but they will by the end, I hope. <laughs> oh, I see what it is. Yes. Yep. From Quatermass and the Pit. The oh, giant man. Martian. A brilliant movie. Yeah. Where it goes by two about? names. It goes by two names. Yeah. Well, tell us, sir. Well, it's like, uh, what was it, a billion years to Earth or whatever it was called? Oh, yeah. No, that's something I actually we will mention because many of the films were released under different titles in the U.S. In the United that's States. Right. That was five million years from Five million or years to Earth. To uh, Earth, that's it, yeah. And I love that movie. I really do. I yeah. love some of the production versions of it, uh, earlier versions. I'm yeah. not too fond of the later versions, but that version of the film is, in my opinion, the best version. Yeah, and I um, I agree with you. I mean, I love that movie. We're kind of getting ahead of myself but because I was going to say it later, but that's actually my all-time favourite is Quatermass in the Pit, as we, we would entitle it in the UK. But yeah, I absolutely adore it. And it's interesting because it is one of the non-monster ones, although it's got a horrific element to it. It's more of science fiction because uh, Hammer did so much stuff where we're kind of trying to focus to you more of that monster period from 57 to the mid-70s, but the occasional sci-fi will slip in. <laughs> so and you know, I got to say, of all the Subway um, uh, posters, because Britain had something that a lot of us here in the States didn't have that, they had those, uh, the ho horizontal posters. The quad stuff. Yeah. yeah, and they would hang up in the tube walls and, uh, you know, go heading down to the uh, train platform. I loved that when I was in London, looking at all the movie posters. It is one of the great things about traveling on the underground in London. I used to do it a lot when I worked in London uh, every week. I was there for two or three days, and I spent a lot of time in the tube, and the posters were fantastic. Uh, you know, you'd see them in every station as you flip through. And, but yeah, I didn't know. So the quads were not as big in uh, North America, the quad posters, the sort of white no, ones. No, no, they weren't as well known. We're known for the one sheets, those, you know, 18 by 24, 36 by, by 24. Um, and yeah, I was going right to say two area. by three posters, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, but when you get these um, uh, posters that you see in, in the, the underground there in London, they're completely different. They're one of my favorite styles. I like collecting them. And in fact, I was so excited. I got to I got asked to do uh, that style of poster to help promote a film. Uh, and the film, it still hasn't been made yet. But I got to paint some major wrestling personalities on it and uh, a, a classic Irish actor as the part of Dracula. And it was Wrestlers versus Dracula. Wow. It's the same, the same guy who made Zombies versus Dracula. And he's still trying to get this movie made. Yeah. And so I did this cool ass uh, hammer style poster. Nice. Like yeah, so they... Macho Man in the fucking hammer horror movie. Mm. Oh my God. Uh, the, the people he had all agreed, they'd all agreed to play their parts. I don't know why the film hasn't happened yet. Every single person, I think it's the lead actor. Uh, playing the hero that hasn't uh, agreed, and I can't say his name, but he he's a crazy actor that's been in a lot of uh, movies since uh, the late 90s. Colin Farrell. And he has siblings that are in Hollywood. <laughs> not Colin Farrell. Um, no. I was about to say Gary Busey, but that's so, definitely not the case. No, he has Gary, a lot of siblings. So speaking of Gary, Gary has now spoken for five minutes and I've not even introduced him yet. No, so how are you today, who Gary? I am. <laughs> how are you Here's today, Gary? <laughs> I'm sorry, I get into a conversation with you, and I forget we're doing a show. Um, well, it's good to see I'm you, mate. Pretty good. We did a morning show today, SEAL Team, and yeah. um, um, Bill Barkley, your fellow Scotsman, he tries to derail the show through the chat. Doesn't work anymore. No. Um, although it was kind of derailed for a little bit. For but a little bit, it did. It yeah. Uh, when you hear me say anyway. That means I'm going back into it. Why don't they All get right. that cue, man? I, I don't understand that. You had to explain it's it to them. The love of my life. The love of my life missed the cue. And yep. she's like, uh, you derailed again right after I said it. And, and anyway. <laughs> so um, can, to continue with introducing the panel, Pope Metallicus, my friend, how are you? My son. Doing good, my friend. Yes. In, good. in, the, middle, in the middle of uh, packing stuff up and getting stuff ready. You're hacking stuff. Yeah, well, I know what that means. I know what that feels like. Um, 
For sure, it's not good. And I'd like to introduce uh, someone who may have been on the show before, I think, uh, I can't remember, but a very good friend of ours, one of the premier wrenches uh, on YouTube, Lord Thoth. How are you, my friend? Hey, everybody. How's it going? I'm great. I I'm truly honored to be invited back. It's great to be here. Good to see you, man. Good it was to awesome you, to see you this morning, too. Lord good to Thoth. hear you. Yes. <laughs> I'm everywhere. <laughs> No, it's good to have you, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. This is how we are spending our Canadian Thanksgiving because I don't really care and I've just got leftover Indian. Yeah, that is today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really matter to me. I'm off now anyway, so what the hell? Yeah, hello to get off is a good thing. <laughs> so I'd just like to say a quick hello to everybody in the chat. I will do my best to keep up with you all today. Um, I've been manipulating a lot of videos and pictures as we go, so forgive me if I... I don't respond to chats uh, as quickly as as I would otherwise like, but uh, hello to our good friend and mod supreme, D-Bud Martin. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Darius is here, and hopefully will be joining us on the stream when he's free, uh, because he is in jail right now. And um, <laughs> that was just a lie. Um, <laughs> Anima Confusa. Great to see oh, you. The love of my life. There, there she, she is. is. Yeah. The love of of Gary's life. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'd like to say hello to Vince Womack on YouTube and on Odyssey because we are on Odyssey too, and he is over there, and I know you're over there, mate. So I can see you, and uh, I will continually pop in. Anybody wants to go over and and, and check out uh, the Odyssey stream? It looks exactly like this one, except five seconds later. Um, but I do want to keep building that live stream um, uh, presence up there. For, the, for those of you who want to be five seconds in the future. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can, I haven't uh, figured out how to do that yet. You're going to have to talk me through that. One oh, it's say. easy, mate. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's, it's slightly different from YouTube. but it's Right it's now I'm easy. doing Twitch. I, I, because of what happened to Ricator, I'm, I'm starting to branch out too. I'm, yeah, I'm doing Facebook, get... Twitch, and uh, what's the other one? Oh, Rumble. YouTube, of course. I want to do Rumble, but uh, you have to pay unless you get 100 <laughs> subs, and I've only got like four subs there. I'm trying. Oh, I've got one person that only ever watches my stuff on Rumble. One person. So I, have, I I don't pay. I'm on Rumble. I have all my stuff auto synced over there. All right. Oh, well, maybe. I'll yeah, try but how many try. followers do you have? Like three. Oh, well, really? if you don't pay, that's good. <laughs> so anyway, Soul Assassin, good to see you. Uh, Martin, it is awesome to see you, my friend. Always great to have you here. Uh, Sean is here. Great to see you, buddy. Das Wolfen, who's already given us um, his list of his his or her. I just see there you go. I assume gender. Um, mm -hmm. Their favorite hammers, which uh, if I can go up, let's just check that out. Das Wolfen, what did you say? Now I can't remember. Well, you can repeat it again later. Sorry about that. But uh, there was an interesting. You give an interesting top five list. Um, pop culture minefield is here. I don't know who that is, but drinking coffee, like and talking in the morning. Sounds like a scam. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a grifter. I heard a rumor it's a dynamic duo with uh, the um, the more swarthy gentleman is the uh, really the star uh, the, of that show. The representation, the representation. Right. Right. diverse and, and includes uh, pop culture mod field. It is. And Salty Texas C, our great friend uh, from Texas. How are you, buddy? Uh, sorry you can't join us today, but uh, good to see you in the chat. So uh, we'll check, check in with the chat as we go, but let's get to the main events. Event or events? Hammer Horror, studio that dripped blood and also uh, excelled in boobs too, I would say. I would say quality boobage. Um, yep. you, sometimes with blood, sometimes without. Uh, and, but, and the boobs got more prevalent as the years went on they because they and needed to sell. For some reason, Hammer, you know, when it went through its decline, it meant more tits. <laughs> Bam! And, and there were still as I can't about. show today because they did start to get into topless nudity. Really? You know, you know, and it kind of started, what was it, in 67 with the vampire yeah. lovers? Oh, and, yeah. And let's, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> I love that movie. I love that movie. So today, I saw uh, it when I was seven years old, I know, and I'm like, these... 
And my parents were around, and I just kept looking around to make sure they weren't coming into the room when I was watching it. <laughs> it was just for me, I was pretty young. I mean, I didn't see a lot of them yeah. in the cinema because I was pretty young, but they showed them on British television late at night. And I was when I was seven, eight, nine, ten, and I would be like, should I be watching this? Right. <laughs> exactly. Checking for the parents. That's right. Are they are they gonna get up? Oh, you know, just sneak out of bed and watch those at like eleven o'clock at night. So. Those are amongst uh, the best movies yeah. of my childhood, gentlemen. That that's like I remember those because and it's too bad because in those days you couldn't rewind it or skip back either. So you had to kind of what movies are coming on that's got boobs in it? And you had to you had to try to sneak into the the, the entertainment room and turn it on and keep the volume really That's low right. so keep your parents didn't know what was going on. You'd have your ear pressed up to the speaker and it would only be one speaker <laughs> in the TV. Yeah. That's right, exactly. Yeah, but uh, it was a, an awesome experience watching those, and they were scary when you were ten or twelve years old. That should, or seven, eight, nine, ten. The stuff was scary. Uh, but Hammer had has a fantastic long history as a, an independent. It's probably the most successful British independent studio, if not in the world. Um, started in 1935. It's actually a very interesting history. That uh, let me just share this. We'll do a little bit of history, and then we'll get onto the movies themselves. So formed by a, a, a guy called Will Hines in 1934, who actually owned a chain of jewelry stores, but he was also a, a a comedian under the name Will Hammer, and he wanted he knew a guy who owned a chain of theatres called Enrique Carreras, a Spanish uh, immigrant to Britain, and they thought, well, why don't we just make some of our own films? And you've got the you've got the theatres, we'll put them in the theatres. So they started to make a bunch of sort of pot boiler detective style stuff. Um, this is Will and, and his son Anthony. Uh, Will's on the, the right, obviously. Son Anthony. Who, it was a family business because Anthony Hines is Will's son, and he took over the studio after the war. And then Enrique Carreras' son, James, also took it over. So the two sons continued to run it. They had a break during the war uh, because of lack of funding or whatever, but they made like pot boil or detective serials and thrillers and comedies and so on. But And then they, they started again after the war, uh, still doing kind of the same stuff. But it, um, by the time they got to the mid-50s, they thought, well, what are we going to be, um, what could we do? here that's different what's what's not getting done uh, this is anthony hines uh, uh, after the war he really became the driving force behind the studio he produced he wrote under pseudonyms and under his own name major driving force and he created what was this most independent uh, successful independent studio in the world but they took the the universal oh by the way war heroes all of these guys they all sp spent time in the uh, the war he was a pilot. Anthony Hines was a pilot during World War II. Um, James Carreras, um, who's the guy strangling Peter Cushing, was wow. a lieutenant colonel in the war. Um, but they had this great vision, and they started to look at the old monster movies. Now, we've all seen the old universals, mainly universal. There are others. Black and white horror movies, Frankenstein... Mm -hmm. Dracula, Werewolf, Wolfman, Werewolf, Mummy. Mm -hmm. They'd kind of become a parody of themselves. I think they appeared like with Abbott and Costello and all that stuff. And they've taste changed and they fell out of, of uh, favor. But these guys said, you know what? If we took that and we used this new Eastman Technicolor, we could make these in color for cheap. Go back to the source material, like the, the novels, the source novels, and really do something that might be different. And Laid, lined up all these great distribution deals with American uh, distributors on a film-by-film -film basis. They didn't tie themselves into just one. And they, they hit upon this golden formula. Color movies with lots of blood, lots of low-cut dresses, um, shocking and, and uh, colorful and a level of eroticism, very gothic. They were still, they kept most of it in the gothic field, but lots of fairy tale and supernatural stuff. Used a lot of real mansions with spooky sets and country houses for those location shoots and a big repertory company of actors, actresses and crew that worked on many of them. So they really created something really neat and they ended up with their own studio as well, Bray Studios. Uh, and they had guys like Terence Fisher, who really became their main director, their go-to guy. 
and um, at the time was kind of dismissed critically a lot of them, but now he's seen as a be it real auteur in this horror field. Uh, you know, a lot of respect for that guy. The um, also had, uh, F- Freddie Francis, who was an Oscar-winning cinematographer, yeah. came a director, and then after his Hammer years, went back to being a DP on things like Cape Fear and Dune, Elephant Man. Worked with uh, David Lynch a lot. Uh, Glory, so really high le- high quality uh, craftsman, you know. Uh, so it wasn't just a sort of bunch of, of you know pot boiler guys doing this stuff. Jimmy Sangster, who did a lot of the writing, uh, started as a production assistant, did direct some of their stuff, and then Ray Studios, obviously, which they bought and uh, developed, still does work as a studio like today. Lighthouse. Wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> still works as a studio today, albeit in a lower level. It's done a lot of BBC stuff like Doctor Who and so on. It's filmed there. They've, they've tried to knock it down a few times. It still keeps stumbling on, and there's supposedly some major investment coming. Um, the trouble is, it's on the um, runway, the the pathway into Heathrow. So. <laughs> Really? Oh, that's wow. a shitty place to do. <laughs> that would mess up a movie <laughs> shoot, that's for sure. Yeah, so that was kind of some of the key players, and they really Well, hammered. did you mention Val Guest? I didn't hear you mention I Val. I didn't. We will be mentioning him later. That's just a, a mere handful of the key behind-the-scenes people. Val Guest was one of the directors that got involved. Brian Clemens. Like 14 or 15 of the films. Yeah, Roy He's Thomas. Uh, co-writing as well. Uh, Roy Baker. um Brian Clemens did some stuff, but these, yeah, these are just some of the key guys that that uh, created the, the history of it, and particularly Heinz, Carreras, Terence Fisher, Jimmy Sangster, they were all there at the beginning of this expansion into horror, and Hammered continued to make other movies as well, um, but the, you know, science fiction. There was comedies later. They made a lot of comedies out of British sitcoms, but horror was where they're, they're, they made their their bones and they were at one time the biggest independent studio in the world so i gotta give them credit they built something really unique as a family business and and um made some some memorable memorable stuff so that's the history lesson it's not a big history lesson as i say i did one percent prep when i could have done a hundred and i still ran out of time after two weeks <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, it's a big library it, it is a big library and I, we won't even today. I've kind of wanted to focus on that horror side between fifty seven and the mid seventies, um, because they made many, many other properties outside of that. Pirate movies, many other hot monster and, and suspense films, comedies. There was a lot, and of it's stuff still making it. films to this day. It's just a lot of people aren't aware it's Hammer. Yeah, and I think that's weird because I actually I I'm like a member of the hammer film website. I love that website. I'm always keeping tabs on what they're working on. And a lot of people don't know that the remake of let the right one in, which was called let me in with Chloe Moritz, whatever her name is yeah, um, Sauvignon. Sauvignon. from kick-ass. She, she was the vampire and it's actually produced by hammer that vampire film. Let me in. Yeah. And there's it's the, a good there's, damn film. Yeah, there's a devil, De- uh, Daniel Radcliffe one, De- the devil yes. within. Is uh, the devil well, within? the lady in black. Oh, is so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lady in black. Well, the original and Let Me In cool. is way better than the remake. Oh, I've uh, I've said that on our show. Yeah. Oh, big it's time. Like, big time. I agree. Film. Yeah. Uh, but the fact is, I still enjoyed the film, the the American Hammer English Anglo. Yeah. I'll call it Anglo. Film. The Anglo, uh, yeah, <laughs> because it had a mix, mixture of American and, and British crews. But the fact is, is the source material is way better. Oh, agreed. Uh, it it made more sense when you th- the ending makes more sense in the the uh, what is it Swedish? What it was Sweet. was it Norwegian? Um, Scandinavian. I just say Scandinavian. Oh, we'll just say Scandinavian. Okay, that encompasses everybody up there. <laughs> yeah, because there was well, teams from Sweden and all look yeah. alike to you. Yeah. <laughs> Hammer <laughs> exclusively bought the rights to make that film when they when they saw it. We want the rights yeah. to make the uh, Anglo version. I don't know. Was is the current iteration of Hammer? Is it? Connected by certain people to the old one, or is it a completely rebooted name? Anybody 
that's yeah, with the company know. now that was with the company back then. I mm-hmm. think they're all retired and or dead. Um, the yeah, majority, the face, right? A couple yeah. of them died just last in the last year. Is when they really started, because they released two films that year. Uh, the first one being the the abominable uh, abominable snowman mm-hmm. with Peter Cushing and <laughs> Are you ready for this? Forrest Tucker. Forrest Tucker. Uh, Forrest Tucker yeah. Wow. <laughs> Forrest, uh, Forrest Tucker. And it's not a bad film. It it actually of all the films, it has the feel of the old Universal monster films. Uh, and well, then, it's it's in black and white for one. Yeah, thing. and then that same year they released Dracula with. Uh, uh, Peter Cushing and um, Christopher, Lee, uh, Christopher yeah. Lee, and it was in gushing color. Well, you, you want to talk about? A, you want to you want to talk about a pair of absolute legends on the screen at the same Absolutely. time? Absolutely, Peter Cushing yeah. and Sir Christopher Lee. Well, we they really- surpassed Boris and and um, oh. um, what's his name? Um, a little Dracula, whatever his name is. The ghost yeah, Boris Karloff. Fuck, yeah. fuck yeah. you. <laughs> Boris Karloff is not worth sucking my dick. Anyway, um, yeah, they did revive the studio in the last ten years, uh, or revive the brand anyway. Because in the mid seventies, they they did go out of date. They, they became started, very pornographic. They started losing money, and a couple of losses was all it took to push them under. Uh, they did make some TV stuff for a little while, but that folded too. So yeah, I don't even I think remember any went, of that. Yeah. Hammer House of Horror TV show. It wasn't very good. That was the problem. It was. I'm very assuming old. that this is while you were living over there in the UK, so you were able to see that. Yeah, I, I, I could see all that stuff on TV and and whatever. But yeah, they went out of date. Uh, taste change. Taste change. Things like The Exorcist, Devil Within, or um, all the Italian horror movies, Daddy or Jane. It kind of put a nail in their coffin. Ha ha ha. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, uh, about the people that were um, involved. We talked about that repertory company feel. And before we get into too many specific movies, which we will, we'll be doing a long section on that. I want you to talk about some of those actors and actresses that were in these multiple things. Uh, There was Andre Morel, um, was one of their major players. he was a prolific British character actor, despite the French name. <laughs> um, or was it French? Andre? That's probably Norwegian, isn't it? Um, he'd been in things like Bridge Over the River, Quine, Ben-Hur. Mm-hmm. He played Quatermass on British television, but didn't do it in the movies. Hmm. He turned and if I could say, Bridge Over the River, Kwai is one of the best war movies of all oh, time. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. Top three of all time. And that includes Midway, the original, which is my absolute favorite. And I'm an Air Force bum. And a, a Navy movie and an Army movie are probably my top yeah, two. Give me 633 so, uh, Squadron any day. Oh, Just to let you know, though. <laughs> that's another Bridge show, up, man. Right there. What you're talking about. Bridge, Bridge, movies. With yeah. Bridge yeah. on the River Kwai, just to let you know, uh, all the people that were actually prisoners of war were invited to the film, and they all walked out. Yeah. Yeah, because it's very much a Hollywood movie versus what actually happened. Yeah, because they show the British uh, being the bad guys when it was actually the French. It was the French, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Military historians, yeah, aside, uh, I enjoyed the movie, and I'm Canadian. It's a great film, but you're absolutely right. Uh, It's it's, obviously what's going to happen when Hollywood gets their fingers into this stuff is they're going to change it. We've seen that for the last 50, 60, 70 years. Well, le- leaving that amazing. aside, it's still a magnificent movie. As a, yeah, as absolutely. Cinema. Oscar Cinematography winning. alone is just Amazing really acting. Yeah, it is awesome. Sir Alec Guinness and William Holden. Sure. Damn. He had a great, but Morel had a big part in that. He, he, I think he did about seven Hammer movies. It's hard to tell. I tried counting them up and there's so many. It's, it's, well, why awesome. did he uh, not want to play quartermass he didn't it didn't say i mean i look i've read three or four books on it and i it, he did not say why he didn't want to do it he was, he was really the good he was really good yeah. as quartermass he was offered the bar he knew the word the the lines many of the scripting was the same for the each consp- corresponding show from the tv uh, movie from the tv show but he just said say he didn't want to do it However, he did play the Dr. Watson with, in, with Peter Cushing and Hound of the That's Baskervilles, right. which, sure which is in our He's list of, we're going to do, Imperatus and I picked 15 of our favourites that we're going to talk about, and that's one of them. Um, and then he had the League and Plague of the Zombies and appeared in many others. So he was a very big part of the 
the Hammer family. I think I've got a few more pictures here. Yeah, so you can see he had that just. It's got a distinctive look, you know. Looking very concerned. No one rocks tweed like these guys. I mean, no, on. no, <laughs> absolutely. Hound's tooth. Hound of the Baskerville. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now then, there was Michael Goff. And he, you know, what's really funny is he always played like villainous, slimy characters. Yeah. And but he would become one of the greatest Alfreds in the history. Oh of God, Batman. yeah. So he first appeared yeah. in that Dracula in 1958. He was Sir Arthur Holmwood in in the, that Dracula movie we mentioned, the first yep. Dracula that Hammer did. But he also had the lead in their in their yeah. version of Phantom of the Opera, which bombed unfortunately for them, cost them a lot of money. Did it's it? A little bit oh. of a shame, yeah. One, um, that's one of Royal Fox's favorite stories ever. She fell in love yeah. with Gerard Butler when he played Phantom. Well, I've got to say I prefer the Hammer version to the Andrew Lloyd Webber, but that's just me. Well, I also prefer it over uh, the silent film. Yeah. Uh, I thought it had a better plot. Well, there's Goff as Alfred, obviously. Great Alfred. Yeah, fantastic. And also... Um, there he is there. Look at him. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then he, he had a pref great... I, this is one of my favorite... Um, Doctor Who's, um, which he, he, um, I was about to say, glad you said it's from Doctor Who because I was sitting there going, Wait, I thought we talked about uh, no Fu Manchu. Uh, there it is. <laughs> That's what I thought it was when I first saw it. Yeah, so he was in Doctor Who. A lot of these guys were in Doctor Who, and a lot of the cut, the, the sort of sub actors in the Hammers were went on to be big in British television over the years Julian Glover, Dennis Waterman, uh, Patrick Moore. <clears throat> I was fixing uh, to say, Doctor Who is your uh, is uh, Great Britain's national television show, isn't it? Pretty much, <laughs> it was. It used to be. Really, I've heard it said that. So you know. So another one was Andrew Keir, who's a good Scottish lad. Uh, he played Quatermass in Quatermass in the Pit. But here he is in um, as Octavian in the Viking Queen movie. It's not did. Scottish. It's crap. It's crap, and he's he's definitely holding on to her by the wrong parts. Um, <laughs> you know the sad thing is i was thinking the same thing yeah um so yeah he he was quatermass in uh, quatermass in the pit which we're definitely going to be covering a lot oh here. yeah definitely and i love uh, the insectoid alien in this oh, God, Just yeah great, great everything about sculptures. it was great yeah and I, and at the time that i mean i saw that for the first time and i must have been about 10 I yeah, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I was a little <laughs> younger when I saw it. I think I was seven, and yeah. it scared the shit out of me. Yeah, you guys uh, are the old guys. I think I was like five. So yeah, I, I, you guys are the old guys here. So I get that. <laughs> so Stephen Ransom's asked an interesting question, which I, I don't necessarily know the answer to. Which was, was there any pushback from the fandom when Hammer presented their version? Of the classic monsters, not that I ever heard of. Uh, I would I'm, say I'm no. Sure. No, I know because. Universal had an agreement with them. Uh, Hammer. Let's and not was, forget that Twitter did not exist, so there was not yeah. so much pushback well, because Universal had had really allowed those monsters to fall into disrepair by making them parodies of themselves in TV shows and comedies. Yep. I think people genuinely responded to an attempt to present them seriously and with love. Yeah, in my absolutely opinion, same, because same. You know, well, you said that the, the disrepair part. I just want to point out what you're talking about is the Abbott and Costello versus the Universal Monster. Absolutely, that's the prime example of and disrepair. whoever I just interrupted. I apologize. Go ahead. Well, all I was going to say was too was back then when movies came out, they hit the theater and they were gone. You yeah. know, mm. you really I don't know how much of a fandom actually was able to be cultivated. <laughs> Well, I do know at Universal. the same time, by the time they started doing their monster movies, I want to say Universal was done making monster movies as well. The yeah, last one they, they were, did was the third the creature one. of the Black Lagoon movies yeah. were yeah. the end of it. They yeah. were done making them, but they weren't done selling them into the theaters because they were repackaging double bills of them for decades, sending special them out. matinee showings, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, spook and, shows. And to to Gary's point about the deals. When they made The Curse of Frankenstein, Hammer were worried about Universal 
suing them. So they made it, like in today's parlance, 25% different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but um, Universal liked them. They did. And After that, Universal said, no, we'll do a deal. Yep, we'll do a deal. Did. So they, they did deals for, for that, and they helped distribute some of them. So they they felt it was good for their old ones to be people would look back and watch those Read again. Anyway. life into them exactly. Yeah, there was respect for the for those monsters and and for that material. So I I think the the success of the Hammer films, like Curse of Frankenstein and Dracula, were huge financial successes worldwide. I think that shows that people did love them. Mm -hmm. And, I'm still gonna and say you also got to remember there was no VHS. There was none of that. They were re-releasing stuff in the theaters just so people could see it. The only the only place that they distributed it really was on television. So and I and I will tell you that despite the not having the internet back then, uh, we had sci-fi horror magazines and we'd uh, we'd write into them, and you would get the pulse of a lot of people through the magazines mm. and through conventions. Yep, yeah. true. Like and Fangoria is one of the greatest. Fangoria and Starlog were my main. Yep. Exactly, Fangoria and Starlog. Yep. Um, and, and so I had there a was a pulse. Yep, yep, there was. And in those magazines too, when they come out every month, that was the way you got your news. There yep. was yeah. no internet. There was nothing else, and uh, especially in the seventies too, eh? Before. We got a, a real taste of things in the 80s where things started to get a little bit better. You had the VHS tapes. You had video stores. You could go pick up these movies. And But in the 70s, man, it was, except for television and movies, as in theaters, the only way to get any information was magazines. And I know my mm -hmm. old uh, comic book shop slash magazine shop slash corner store used to have several racks that that spanned the whole entire wall of magazines. Yeah. He said racks. He said racks. racks. <laughs> He's talking about hammer movies. And, he said yeah. and the top of the racks had nice racks. racks. <laughs> nice racks. Or racks. Yeah, yeah. There racks was two kinds racks. of racks. Two kinds yep. of racks in these movies. Yeah. Boobs <laughs> and movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. They, we used to watch, I used to see a lot of these at the cinema in my local town as double bills. Repack yeah. it. For several years, they would put them out Saturday matinee, double bills, hammer horror, which is where I saw a lot of them in the cinema for the first time. Yeah, and they were well attended. They just, even though they'd been out for years, there would be like you know, was, maybe there's five hundred people at a showing. You know, well, this is bad. this falls under the thing that Keith and I have talked about ad nauseum is that nerds have been starved for entertainment for decades. It wasn't until the two thousands that we started seeing more nerd fair mm. hitting cinemas. Mm. And we sort of hit towards the end of the, the early 2000s. We, we saw uh, what we refer to as a nerd spring, where <laughs> it was just all this nerd fair in the theaters. Yeah. And people piss and moan about it. But I'm like, Jesus, dude. Oh, it's I'm nothing like it was when we were got. kids. This we is kids. nothing like what we had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we were, you thought you were a loner most of the time. Like yeah. Else, yeah. I was lucky. Yeah, you had, had to hide your love. You had to hide it from the, the everybody else. Because that's right, uh, we were nerds when you got beat up for it. <laughs> that's right, and I was a hockey player, played on a hockey team, and that you know, you know, my high school hockey team, and uh, I had to hide it from the bros. And and I I wasn't a big guy, but uh, you know, I could put the puck in the net, and that was what I had. Is I had the protection of all the goons on the squad, but. If I had ever revealed that I like Dungeons and Dragons and I liked horror movies and I like this sci-fi nerdy yeah. shit, I yeah. would have gotten beat up every day. And and as, yeah. as one of those goons, I join you for a D and D campaign. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, I love <laughs> luckily, Hammer didn't seem to have that effect because I knew a lot of guys liked Hammer stuff, even if they didn't like sci-fi. They liked the Hammer stuff, so it was. Probably yeah. more, uni Wait, more it, universal. Uh, you think, I the think, more, it, you think yeah, horror it, stuff is more universal versus the sci-fi stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. Think so, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Horror yeah. could be seen as a guy, macho guy thing. You know, I love yeah. horror movies. You know, Plus, the, the boobs was, never hurt. So, you know. Boobs never. Oh, hurt. I don't know. Have you ever? If you were slapped in the face by some of these, you never know. <laughs> I may have once or twice been slapped in the face by big boobs. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, also Michael, even in the seventies, like there was boobs in all sorts of sci-fi movies too. Oh, Logan oh, Ron and all the other stuff. Sex has always been used as a selling point in nerd uh, or geek or yeah, it's genre just since, movies. It's just been since the turn of the century that they've decided to turn into prudes and yeah. not put it in there. So. Um, Anyway, Michael Ripper, another 
key player who did tons of supporting roles in Hammer movies. He'd be like a coachman or a bartender or a butler or an assistant or whatever. I think Scars of Dracula was probably one of his biggest roles. He had a real prominent role in that. He was in at least 20 or more Hammer movies. He was all, You'll see him in the background in loads of them. <laughs> He's the guy cutting up the body or driving the coach or whatever, mm-hmm. usually at the same time. Um, I th- yeah, so he did have that Scars of Dracula. I think he was uh, fairly prominent in that one. Um, and then we have the great Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed. Legendary wow. hell-raising British actor. That's My awesome. God, he was a hell-raising actor. He was, no, if only we had anybody. time to show some of the videos of him on British television hammered just acting like an idiot. That yeah, drunk on interviews, is, it was like commonplace <laughs> for him. That's freaking great, man. Well, he had that like, smoldering were, look, right? That Shelley everybody Winter. was, wow. Yeah. yeah. Shelly Winters yeah. threw a, dr- a drink in his face on Johnny Carson. That's yeah, awesome. and I, I don't would, would you her. say would you say he was the uh uh how how would I put it the the British Jason Momoa of his time? All the ladies loved him, and all the men wanted to be him. Uh, kind of thing. In a sense, I don't want to be Jason Momoa, but I get yeah, but point. you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, in a sense, yeah. But he was a real guy's guy, a real hellraiser. None of your yeah, just us. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hey, Baron von Headbanger said it. Porthos. That's right. He played Porthos. Oh, in, yes, in, he uh, did. The three yes, months he did. Absolutely. He's one music. of my f- favorite actors. That's by the way, Baron von Headbanger. That's my buddy that sells me comic books, and I grew up with him. Good I, to I see did you, my Baron. first comic yeah, book. Yeah, work absolutely. At his he's, house. He's spot on. He is spot so on. Hello, Baron, um, and hello, Mister Angel, and hello, Porthos. Stephen Ransom. By the way, one of the best Three Musketeers movies ever. Yeah. Yes, oh, the first God, one yeah. in particular. Yes. Yep. Yep. So he, he did. Uh, he actually did. Is, what is this? He did seven Hammer movies, believe it or not. But wow. the big lead, the big break, was the lead in The Curse of the Werewolf in 1961. This yeah, one. there was one that was really a mystery movie shot in black and white that he did. Yeah, uh, where Cash he something is, about Cash for something. Or yeah. yeah, he was supposed to be dead, but he actually kept popping up, and mm. it was all to drive somebody crazy. I remember that movie, man. But the werewolf, Curse of the Werewolf, is one of the greatest performances in a horror movie ever. He was so he good. Went at that. Balls deep into this, man. Yeah, he balls absolutely deep. Did deep. It. And, 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 and his the acting effects, range shows his acting range. In the 60s, too, right? The, the effects at that time, too. I was, it's shocking how good they actually were for mm. that, that era. This one, practical particular. effect. They're, they're what I loved good. about Hammer was that if they said that it didn't look real enough, throw more, seriously. Throw more blood on it. Yeah, right. cover some more blood. Yeah, more boobs. Yeah, the more boobs, boobs. Blood. More boobs. More blood. ketchup packets. More pe- <laughs> ketchup packets. <laughs> so we've got another favorite of ours, of, the, of our community, David Prowse, who played yeah. Frankenstein's monster twice. Yep. Wow. In uh, Frankenstein, uh, horror of Frankenstein, and monster Frankenstein and the monster from hell. This is when they were trying to sexy up the monster. Yeah. Uh, because. The first was uh, was uh, Christopher Lee, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, he right. played him first, and that was for drama. They were actually telling the story and making uh, Frankenstein out to be the villain he was. And then they flipped it and made the monster sexier by getting uh, Darth Vader to play yeah. him with those big fucking man boobs. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we all know and love David Prowse from "There's the Monster from oh, Hell." God, yes, oh, wow. that was him too. Yeah. That's him too, yeah. And I didn't really, I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten all about this film and this mm-hmm. role. I watched yeah. a little clip of it. He was really good, you know? Like, he just had physical Yeah, presence. that's why I've always voice. been offended by the way some people act, uh, you know, that, well, they didn't use his voice because he couldn't really act. I said, no, he had a Surrey accent. And that's right, he's from Surrey. 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 Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah. Anyway, great, two great lead Monster roles for him and yeah. Howard and were very, very good ones. And uh, there he is. There he is um, there. Well, there he is with, with Ralph Bates. And I think Ralph Bates is trying to figure out where to stick that thing. Yikes. I'm not sure where he wants to stick it, but it's, it's <laughs> uh, like, you know, uh, this is your. It's like, um, your it's like Peter Griffin with the. Uh, do, I, do I draw the penis? 
<laughs> yeah. Are you taking something out with that or putting it in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is this your first or second vaccination? That's right. Is this your 15th vaccination? But Ralph Bates was the latter day hammer star that they introduced. This was the on their decline, this movie. Yeah, they, they tried to make him push him, and he's a good actor. He did a lot of British TV after. Dr. They, Jekyll's Sister Hyde, wasn't that yeah, it? Yeah, Dr. Jekyll's Sister Hyde. He was in five hammers that I could count. Maybe others, but I can only count five. And he wasn't bad, but they, they were really, there he is looking like Ozzy Osbourne. Right. Yeah. Don't you think he looks like Ozzy? Yeah, he does. I'm just looking at the tits. I was well, just going to say the rack is uh, overtaking. So the that's that's him with uh, Mar, um, Jut Stensgard. Jut Stensgard <sighs> in Lust for a Vampire. I, I wonder what her qualifications were. <laughs> um, she blonde hair, she obviously. A, she had a PhD in vampirology. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're getting to the big boys. There we go. Peter there Cushing. Is. Prolific. The man who and, built Hammer. Uh, right prolific here. actor and loved in Britain. I mean, you've no idea how much him and Christopher Lee, Lee were loved and revered in Britain long before Lee was in. Star Wars and all that stuff. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was well, an old I, man when he was in Star Wars. Well, I mean, yeah. he did, Christopher Lee did get knighted for all this, so... He did, and yeah. they're, they were very good friends. Yeah. They, they were, were, they were real serious chums, man. Tight friends, yeah. And In fact, one of the last photos that I've seen of Peter uh, Cushing before he died was with Christopher Lee at his door, because they were going in and, and took an yeah. uh, opportunity to take a photo. Hmm. But yeah. He did 22 that I could count films for Hammer. I may have missed one or two. 22 films, more than anyone else. So he was Mr. Hammer in that sense. Yes, he was. Perhaps slightly overshadowed by Christopher Lee just because of the Dracula look. But Peter Cushing was Mr. Hammer. And now do, you, do you think that uh, one of my favorite movies ever is uh, Fright Night? Do you think Roddy McDowell was channeling him uh, in that movie? Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Would not be surprised, yeah. Which movie? I, I, I didn't catch it. Fright Night. Fright Night. The one with... Uh, oh, Fright Night. No, the na char character was named Peter Christ... Uh, uh, Peter, Peter something, yeah. It was basically, he was an homage to both, both Peter of them. Cushing and Christopher yeah. Lee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that Cushing didn't make many other horror films he did, but the Hammer ones are the ones I always mainly remember. I just remember in Fright Night, uh, them showing him on TV driving a steak and the ketchup packet getting squirted in his face, right. you know. Uh, <laughs> it, it looked like, like a ha scene from a Hammer movie, you know. And it was absolutely was. Uh, yeah. If you go back and watch that, every single scene that he does was kind of taken from hammer films yeah mm -hmm. cool. yeah so um he did uh obviously victor frankenstein was a major role he did van helsing many times dracula's nemesis but he played that great sherlock holmes oh, and, no. and what many people regard as the best sherlock holmes movie ever i know rathbone's got his fans um, but the the Hound of the Baskervilles Hammer one is is a great movie, and I think Cushing made a fantastic Holmes. I also think we get to talk about one of his more interesting movie choices in this list today. Not necessarily. Yes. You know which movie I'm referring to. Yeah, and we'll list. save that for now. But yes, Oof. Um, and of course he went on to do other things. You know, <laughs> Miff, big, the big here is the big muff. Um, the and right behind him, Dave Prowse. Yeah. A uh, couple correct. of hammer vets right there. Right. Right. Hammer yeah. vets. Yeah. 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 And nobody rocks, nobody rocks Hound's Tooth in a Pipe quite like uh, Peter Cushing. Uh, Look how calm he looks. He's hammering he looks. A, in a hammer movie. <laughs> he always looks so calm when he's doing it. <laughs> and, uh, Just well, another day, old man. Now, here he is in the, not a oh, Hammer film. Oh, my God. This is my Doctor Who. Not my a Hammer Doctor film. Who. My he Doctor Who Do as well. He played Doctor Who twice in movies, and I loved those movies. Uh, I never saw them as being the same thing as the TV show, but I did love them. They were they were taken from Terry Nation's scripts, but yes. he, they changed things because his name is actually Doctor Who. That's right. And he's, and he's a hurt human from Earth, yeah, and his time were, machine, the TARDIS, is actually man-made. Uh, it's the uh, two right. things they changed. 
they really made those as Dalek movies, not Doctor Who movies. Yeah, they really about are. They are yeah, about the toys. Because Terry Nation toys. wanted to promote the Daleks more because he owned all the rights to that. So. Yep. Uh, that's and I love him. I love Wonderful them. guy. And then, of course, his great friend, uh, Scaramouche. No, uh, Christopher Lee. Um, just, I mean, what a what an all-round renaissance man. Shout out to a fellow veteran, too. A yes, true and, veteran, too, by the way. A fucking yeah. murderer, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of the I, enemy. He killed oh, many yeah. people. <laughs> I may be an intelligence officer today, but he was a real intelligence officer. Yeah. Yeah, the, a lot of these guys, well, as I said, the, the James Carrera is the son of the guy that founded Hammer and who refounded it after the war. Lieutenant yeah. Colonel rose through the ranks to become a lieutenant colonel. And then Christopher Lee was, you know, part of the most British sounding agency I've ever heard, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. That's right, yes. <laughs> In other words, we're going to fuck you up with an English accent. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like we're going to beat you. We're going to beat you with the tip of our canes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, Christopher Lee with Peter Jackson when Peter Jackson's like talking about what, what you know getting stabbed, what what that's like, and then Christopher Lee goes into a diatribe explaining to him what really happens when you get stabbed because he's done it, and it's just like oh my right, fucking yeah. god. <laughs> and let me tell you, as as a gentleman who has been stabbed in the line of duty, his description is really accurate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so yeah, an absolute all round renaissance man. Uh, obviously, did played Dracula seven times in Hammer, two more times in other studio productions. Um, first appeared though as the monster in The Curse of Frankenstein. Yep, so it wasn't Dracula, <laughs> it was the monster, and he did over 20 Hammer movies. and a lot of them, I think he felt, were a little silly, but hey, they kept paying him more money, and it was a lot of them were with Peter Cushing, his friend, so what the hell, you know. Hey. <laughs> and people had to make a living, you know, actors had to make a living, but he brought yeah. such quality to these roles. Although he did get tired of Dracula to the point where he yes, refused he to read an entire yeah. script. Yep. His Saruman is just amazing. Reading the books growing up uh, and, and just picturing that character, and then when he filled that role, I was like, that is the yeah, character so. that I've always pictured my entire life. Yeah, Name was, this movie that? in character. This is Christopher Lee. From the 80s, that's for damn sure. Name oh, that's movie. the werewolf movie, isn't it? Nope, this is one of my no. favorite movies of all Not time. Rollerball. Not Rollerball. No, um, nope. Oh, shoot. Um, the, oh, it's God. the return of Captain Invincible. Oh, my God. What? And he's Mr. Midnight. This is where Christopher wow. Lee does song and dance. <laughs> I can't believe you pulled that one out. That, that's pretty good. It's <laughs> one of my favorite performances of his ever. He sings, he dances. It's just but, incredible. But no, like to me, Christopher Lee is just. The textbook definition of the word gravitas. Oh god, yeah. I mean, His look at voice that. and presence. So oh. Yeah, he can yeah. just he can just make anything sound compelling. And he eats up scenery, and, man. It's it somewhat out. menacing. Yeah. yeah. If you've never seen the Return of Captain Invincible, well worth a look. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's he is in the iconic uh, role. Of course. Looking looking suspiciously at the cameraman. I think I would be getting worried. <laughs> right, <laughs> you're next, pal. All right, and of course we, we know and love him. And, and he's, I mean, I can't, I, I can't imagine anyone else playing a role like that. I mean, possibly, he's got the gravitas, but he can do the evil bit too. You know, possibly the greatest casting choice of all time. Yeah, and don't forget, as Baron says in the chat, the metal albums that he did. Yes, I actually own both of them. Uh, he did those with Richie Faulkner from Judas Priest, yeah, and they yeah. both kick ass. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was metal course. before there was metal. That's, that's right. That's why he calls himself Baron Von Headbanger. Fellas. Yeah. I'm telling you. There's uh, Scaramanga. The man yes. with three, the man the man with three with nipples. The gun. I was about to and say. What I always loved about that is the fact that he is uh, first cousin to um, Ian Fleming. That's right. Yes. And he had an impact on Ian Fleming uh, in some of his writing of James Bond. So therefore, uh, it was a tribute in many ways that he would get to be a villain in a James Bond film. 
I know. No, it's it's not my favorite Bond by any stretch, but his no, it's a silly movie really, in many ways. It really is. Yeah, but his, he's I a great Bond villain. Yeah, and the Devil Rides Out. Of course, he was uh, magnificent in that, in a, in a good guy role for once. Mm-hmm. And still menacing uh, as a good guy. And still menacing yeah. as a good guy. How does he know all these horrible things? <laughs> Even though he's a good guy, yeah. Um, and his part and later, is his, by the way, and there is, is the mummy. Oh my god, his mummy was great. But uh, I don't think uh, it's not Hammer. I don't think Hammer did the Wicker Man, as I recall. And I just think that his performance in that film was amazing. Well, it's funny you should say that. But that's one of my favorite movies of all time. The Absolutely. Wicker Man. Him and uh, oh, what's his name, um, the Welsh actor who is the oh, um, uh, yeah the Equalizer guy. Equalizer. Um, they were so good in this film. Yeah, not to be confused Jesus. with the remake with Nicolas Cage with which Jesus. not the bees. <laughs> yeah. uh, what was his name? The Equalizer. Edward. Oh uh, Edward. Woodward. Edward. Edward Woodward. Yes, Just Edward Woodward. And yeah. his last film was uh, Hot Fuzz. Yeah. Uh, Edward Woodward was also uh, played a, a very tough cop guy in uh, British TV called Callan, C A L L A N. Oh, he looks really so hard. Great show. He was as hard as nails. Yeah. Yeah, he's always yeah. stiff lip, man. Very stiff lip. Which is funny and- how he wasn't a hard guy in this, Edward Woodward. He was the, he was the patsy, in effect. Hmm. Don't want to give it away if you've never seen it. It's a classic. Oh, he thought budget. he was the cock of the walk. He knew what was going oh, on, yeah, figuring yeah. things out. He had no idea what was happening. I to think him. Uh, was Ingrid Pitt in that? The Wicker Man? Oh. I think it was Ingrid Pitt. And she was in, of course, and we're going to talk about her in a minute. But Let me but Yeah, Chris, Christopher Pitt. Lee, an absolute legend. Yes, no doubt. Yes, miss, we miss him dearly. And these guys were big, big stars in Britain for decades. Uh, beloved, and part of his British part of his like looming figure too is he wasn't he like six foot five? Uh, he was a big dude, big guy, yeah, no doubt. So uh, that's not everybody that was in these movies because we'd be here all night. No, which is fine. But we do. We've talked about the guys. Yes, should, should, we, should, should we? Should we? Should we? I just should we talk? Track. Yeah, should we talk about the girls, or can we skip that? You can't cover Bond without covering the Bond girls, can you? I mean, come on, bro. Are we going to do the girls of Hammer? Shall we do the girls of Hammer? Got to, man. Got to. Hammer time! I mean, and again, we're not going to do them all. That's for damn sure. There's so many of them, we can't do them all. We'll do a few of the choice ones. So let's start with Veronica Carlson, pictured here with the lovely Kate O'Mara, who's one of my favorites. Hmm. Veronica Carlson was uh, was in at least three hammers. Dracula is risen from Are the you grave. Sure it's not Hillary because those breasts seem to defy gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Frankenstein must be destroyed in the horror of Frankenstein. Veronica Carlson was a big hammer girl. Um, I don't know what it is that appealed about her. I've never been able to quite <laughs> I don't know, put man. my finger I don't, on it. I can't figure it out myself. I, I just, that water must be cold. Is she a fembot? Because those look like guns. You could poke someone's eye out with that, as um, somebody said in the chat earlier. I volunteer. (laughs) See, here she is in uh, Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. Um, Dracula had the most immaculate taste, didn't he? Really? I mean, when you've been alive for that long, you do get to refine certain things about yourself. Right. Yeah, she was one of the, the and then there's here here she is with Peter Cushing. Now he knows where to hold her. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's one of the the, the ones I, I really like, Veronica Carlson. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I think of note would be oh, here's another one of hers. Sorry, I can't Ooh. remember which movie this is from, but. I, there's oh, a couple of things about this picture that really I really like. Oh, now, those are glued on. You can see that because they're afraid of them flopping open. You can see oh, they're, that those are glued. Oh, yeah, they're not coming out. Yeah, that's <laughs> more of the pity. And there she is again. She's got those um, pointed. Yeah, the guns all always these. seem loaded and ready to go. Yeah, I was fixing to say all these pictures are being taken in wintertime, obviously. Yeah. We're going to get ourselves hideously banned here. <laughs> But without the the without the um, 
Harbor. The girl's hammer wouldn't have been half of what it was. We're, we're here for the movies, we promise. They, they introduced that element of sexuality, sensuality, and eroticism to horror, which had only been implied in the earlier movies, very much implied. It's funny you should say that, because I think really the journey into modern vamp eroticism was really paved by the Hammer movies. If you uh, There's yes. role-playing games, whether it's tabletop role-playing games, whether it's novels, whether it's Anne Rice, whether it's movies that have come uh, after the Hammer movies, they really kind of tuned into that eroticism that well, yeah, was well, really well, reflected from the movies in the 50s and 60s and even the 70s where, yeah, it was all about... Uh, and I hate to say this because I, I know I'm probably going to be kicked off of whatever uh, media I'm on, but um, women in that subservient role that were the screen queens, that were the, um, you know, where they talk about the the casting where if you could scream as a woman in a movie, in a horror movie, you were going to be able to do all kinds of B movies in the 70s and 80s. and. So I think this is really that kind of journey that this theater, this group has taken to really bring their movies into the, the zeitgeist of the American culture. And uh, it's just it's so cool seeing these amazingly beautiful, talented women in these roles, because, wow, because I can remember like I may not remember their name, but let me tell you, there are two parts of their anatomy that I remember. <laughs> and I, I hope and I'm uh, confused I we're not making you uncomfortable but um, I think what I'd like to say is that despite the fact they were indeed many of them cast for their, their incredibly good looks which is not unusual in the movies Hammer treated its women very well with parts they, they got lots yeah, of parts uh, <laughs> they, yeah, you said parts eh? they, treat, they got a lot of lead roles later on particularly many of the they movies were completely were completely female led, uh, so well, it wasn't like they like were Countess Dracula. Countess Dracula, uh, she the vampire lovers. She um, one million years she, BC. Oh These were uh, uh, Lost Continent, I think, is or Creatures Lost Creatures or whatever it's called. There's a lot of these were female led movies, and the, the women were the strong women. So there's, it wasn't like yeah. they were just well, throwaway. Like Raquel Welch no, with yeah. uh, one million years BC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. natural too. Oh, natural. Female, female was the yeah. main character. But the Karnstein stuff that we've mentioned, Lust for a Vampire, Vampire Killers, Twins of Evil, whatever, they Twins were all oh. all women led stories. And that's, I think, the, you know, they didn't just throw them in there for the looks. It helped and that right. didn't do any harm. But <laughs> no, we, we, we must be making all this up because, I mean, the media just tells us that women weren't even in movies until the 2000s. The, right. There was, <laughs> no. yeah, there was no strong female leads. You know, forget about Countess Dracula or the vampire lovers or any of the, yeah, the lust for a vampire. Strong so, female roles. Yeah. So Caroline Munro, future Bond girl, of course. Yes. Uh, was in Dracula AD 1972. She was also in Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter. Great movie. Yeah, Lots of strong I women. really like that film. She's a great actress. Or uh, Loved Caroline Monroe. Uh, Christopher um, Lee looks like he doesn't want to uh, do a rebite because there's already blood there. So, ugh, ugh, oh, that's I, disgusting. Uh, there's already blood there. Mm. <laughs> it's barbecue uh, sauce. I don't know she if was, what, she was a sinner for a real magazine. Her. She was, yeah. This must have been a real magazine, Hammer Glamour. I don't remember it, but $3.99, issue two. Oh. Let's not forget 1977, The Spy Who Loved Me. Well, let's not oh, forget yeah. that. Ooh. How could wow. we? Wow. Wow. Yeah, that girl's gorgeous. I think the picture, a picture that may be more relevant to that time frame of Caroline Monroe would be this one, of course, which is getting closer to that. Mm -hmm. This was in Kronos, I think. Or round about that era. She may not have been dressed like that in the movie, but it's on there the it set. There it is, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, did someone spay, say the spy, spay, say the spy who loved me? The spy who loved is. me. Fuck yeah. The spy who loved me. It is me. absolutely the one of my favorite James me. Bond films. Absolutely. It is one of my top five, yep. That was it, right it, up there. It's gotta be. It gotta She's be. Like, Roger, look it's up one here. of the best written uh, of the spy films. Yeah. With him. Sure. And Lady Thoth's favorite Bond, by the way. That's right. It's a really? great movie. Really? Cool. 
I could yeah. see Roger Moore being someone's favorite. He had a lot of really good quality. Oh films. yeah, I mean, this was one end... of his. Big... For me, he did three right. films. He did yeah. uh, that were great Bond films. One very first one that he did, yes. uh, Live and Let Die, mm -hmm. uh, For Your Eyes Only, and this film. Yeah, the Spy that, 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 uh, gold, yeah. gold fingering oh. wasn't part of that. Gold fingering. Yeah. <laughs> no. I must have so, rented the wrong Bond movies. So oh, remember, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I do remember this clip. Her character says to Roger Moore. Uh, Mr. Bond, my eyes are up here. And he says, I've made my choice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me about businesswoman. <laughs> the toxic 70s. Gotta love them. Now, even though uh, you know, see, we grew up in that, eh? I, well, I that. don't know if everybody on the panel here kind of grew up in the, you know, sixties, seventies, but Why we grew up in that. And that, that, boob. that so was gentleman. That was the way to be the gentleman, though. He he yeah. deflected the the whole. Like she's like, my eyes are up here, and he's like, I've made my choice. Like that is such think, a gentleman way to deal with it. I think I may have made that up, of course, but that's. <laughs> well, I want to point out, Brian, that you left your your digital hand on her boob when you enlarged I did. it. It's not you just a see hand. his little white cursor <laughs> hand right on her boob. This is when she was she was auditioning for the role of Galadriel in Rings of Power. Right. Gorgeous. She's gorgeous. She is gorgeous. Yes, she is. Carolyn Monroe, yeah. yeah. And then of course we go into the wonderful Ingrid Pitt. Oh yeah. This is wow. uh this She's is the vampire lovers. Or, yeah, Sorry. Vampire lovers. vampire lovers. Vampire lovers. And then she did Countess Dracula. So two. And everybody movies. listening to this, and everybody in the chat, if you haven't seen Vampire Lovers, it has to be on your must oh, watch sorry. list. This is Countess Dracula. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you Countess something Dracula. about this one. Is some of the costumes in this, the Victorian, That's Vampire uh, Lovers, uh, to yeah, Elizabethan style wow. dresses were amazing that they wore in this this film. The costuming was always spectacular in these movies. She has yeah. this one dress with the the large collar that is somehow gorgeous and at the same time hot. Um, really fucking cool dress. It looked very. Is, um, is that the black little, dress with the? Um, I'm trying to remember that dress because I think. Yeah, I know exactly the dress you're talking about. That is amazing. I think we might just. It's get the one with where this I picture. think she's just. wearing at the beginning, but um, right, right, right. <clears throat> But there was a film so, that came out in this period too, uh, Brian. That needs—it's not Hammer, but it was clearly inspired by Hammer. And it's that piece of shit Roman Polanski's movie, uh, *The Fearless Vampire Killer*. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. I actually haven't seen that one. It's not that great a film, but the fact is, it's yeah. clearly Hammer inspired. Yeah, yeah. it's like ham-fisted Hammer, I would say. Oh, very ham-fisted. That's yeah. why it's not popular. So mm -hmm. moving on, we have. Um, Madeline Smith, who was in at least three Hammers, Taste the Blood of Dracula, she has Vampire that Lovers. Beauty. Um, yeah, Vamp very beautiful woman. Vampire Lovers and Frankenstein, the Monster from Hell. Um, I think this is from the Frankenstein one. Um, this is from. This Are is we supposed to look cover. at her eyes? No. This is just a, a magazine cover she did. Wow. Not, not related I keep, to Hammer. I keep trying to look up at her eyes and I can't. <laughs> I'm trying to She's now got look away. Eyes. She has eyes. <laughs> Sentient Dildo's here. Good to see you. Uh-oh, uh -oh, look out. Dildo. Yes. Hail, Sentient is, Dildo. This is in this is Taste the Blood of Dracula, this one. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, that's actually um Bernard uh you know M from the Bond movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah. What's his name? Bernard um I want to say Shaw, but that's wrong. It's um, that'd be George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Edwards, yeah, no, no, he was in no. Chic. Bernard Red Edwards. Um, anyway, it's him. Yeah, Bernard, Lee. Have, Bernard Lee. Bernard Lee. Bernard Lee. Yes, that's it. And then we have um, from the Vampire Lovers, a um, couple of great shots. Oh my God, that was the scene that I'm like looking around behind me to make sure my parents weren't walking in. Yeah. Right. Is Madeline on the bottom? Madeline's on the, on the top, bottom. isn't she? Is she on the top? I thought she was on the bottom. 
Oh, look out. The chat's going crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. Enhance. Yeah. Enhance. 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 I'm good with either. I'm just going to watch, ladies. You go through her. I, I just. I'm going to be like Dracula oh, no. in the shadows. Oh, no. I mean, this, I mean, this was dealing with stuff for the time. I mean, Hammer were getting, Hammer were further time. getting, they had this X certificate in Britain, which was 18 and over. The Hammer were always getting this certificate because of this. Oh, yeah. Everything Hammer put out in England had the X rating, which was like yes. an R rating here. It wasn't like our X. Hammer used it very nicely because they used the X in a couple of titles. The Quatermass Experiment, they did with the big X. <laughs> ah, And then clever. X the Unknown. They had a movie, X the Unknown. The X was a big part of the title. So they used the, the X certificate as a drawing point, which is good. I like that. I, ha That's clever. I have to do a quick shout out to uh, Problem Being. He's a YouTuber out there. And oh, he, no did a, he, he did it. Yeah, absolutely. He did that video um, a, a few, uh, well, gee, almost a year ago now, which was hashtag uh, fucking scissoring. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm glad Az man. isn't here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Az from Heels versus Babyface would really yes. get a howl out of that. Because, yeah, 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 fucking scissoring, fucking right? Scissoring, yeah. <laughs> so, we're looking at this picture of Madeline Smith. I've always wanted to be a pair of hands. I envy a pair of hands. Yes. <laughs> but I envy those hands. Oh, oh you can put your hands elsewhere. I'll take care of that. <laughs> okay, Raquel oh, Walsh. She only, did, yeah, she only yeah. did one, but it was a doozy. Yeah, it was. One million doozy. years wow. BC. She was the lead in that, and that's a famous costume. Famous how many, role how many of you guys had that poster? How, how many? I had it. In, I wanted it, and my dad wouldn't let me have it. And But here's yeah. a funny thing. He kept uh, it. When I was a kid, one of my <laughs> friends said, one of my friends said, this is elementary school, says, uh, because I was talking about the movie, and he says, that movie is so dumb. Dinosaurs and humans didn't exist at the same time. And I turned to him, fourth grade, said, if that's all you care about with that movie, you missed the whole no point. point of this. <laughs> <is shit. laughs> yeah. I got news for you. <laughs> right? I think uh, Soul Assassin's got it right. I will be, re if I'm lucky and I'm good, I'll be reincarnated as Madeline Smith's bra back in time. <laughs> Oh shit! Um, uh, Animus talking Croatian in the chat again. Oh. So we'll He's move on to, uh, to Ursula Andres or Ursula Andres, as I would prefer wow, to call really? her. Wow, really? She was oh. in She. She was the lead in She, which yep. is Hammer the movie original and a Bond rather, girl, a rather yeah. good one as well. A rather good lead and a great role for her. Mm -hmm. and, they were uh, ahead of the curve with with. Um, putting women in lead roles they really were yeah absolutely and she played that one brilliantly and and i have to say uh sexual uh jokes aside she looks stunning there i mean absolutely stunning oh, yeah. dressed yeah. Well, brilliantly she yeah. was old school that sexuality was okay with feminism yeah uh right. you know a lot of these women said you know being s s sexy and beautiful is part of being a woman so yeah uh, it's only the modern mindset that says, no, it's not sexualizing. It's like mm -hmm. you, you're telling us to do something that comes naturally. Right. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, she's dressed so well there by the costumers that she looks what she's meant to be, a regal mm -hmm. ruler, stunningly yeah. confident and beautiful. So there's nothing wrong with that. The um, original Bond should, girl. I, I think yeah. it's the, yeah, the original Bond girl. I think it's the only hammer she did. Uh, I'm, absolute, I'm absolutely shocked at the lack of body positivity in Hammer movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to run away from a monster or a vampire, so you can be too hefty. Yeah, yeah, true. You'll get fit eventually, one yeah. way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on to Susan Denberg, who did a, a Frankenstein created woman, which obviously then was a, a lead role. She was the one, but it's funny because it was a guy's brain they put in the woman, if I remember rightly. So that talk about oh, that's confusion. Creepy. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's interesting. No uh, wonder he got upset when he woke up. Right? <laughs> what the hell is Actually, this? He could have said, you know what? I'm okay with this. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like that old joke. It's like if I had tits like tits like that, I'd never leave home. Never leave home, yeah. <laughs> so Sen Susan Sentient Dildo is killing the chat, man. He, he, oh, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's killing it. 
<laughs> so she only did that one, but uh, she was a Playboy centerfold. That's why. You, uh, Not, surprised. Not surprised. As was many of the, many of these girls that did a lot of Playboy stuff. Uh, Julie, oh, Ege or Egg. I never knew how to pronounce it. E G E. Again, it looks like they're using the spray glue on her boob because you shouldn't yeah. be getting that curve in there unless it's glued on on the right boob there that's on our left. Yeah. See that curve there? That shouldn't I exist do. unless they're using some sort of spray on adhesive. Actually, sorry, this is still Susan Denberg. Sorry, not Julie. Uh, Gorgeous done stuff. Yet. Beautiful, yeah. Um, so the creatures the world forgot with culture. Zoom casino. in. There we go. Culture, so, culture, yeah, culture casino, casino is on the right there. Uh, this Check is a mix between. Out. This is a mix between the land at time forgotten Zardoz, I think. Um, <laughs> this was Julie Edge or Eeg. There was a lot of nudity in this one, which is terrible. Uh, she also appeared in The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. This is made Which is a great film. Well, this is meant to be 1904. Look at her. <laughs> yeah. Dressed like that in 1904. <laughs> Somebody uh, wet down that shirt. Sweat, we'll wet it down, for God's pretty, sake. This is more Temple of Doom, I think, than anything else. But, oh, I mean, yeah. the, with the hairspray, it could have been the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. The chat is killing me, man. Oh my god! Yeah, I wish I could get them all highlighted, but uh, with a producer, <laughs> um, and there she is in um, enhance, enhance, <laughs> enhance, 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 enhance. There's yeah. actually topless versions of this. This was the again the creature. She's actually topless there. She's just blocking with her yeah. arm. Mm -hmm. And she actually starred in an in a not Hammer movie, but she starred in a film called Up Pompeii. <laughs> which was based upon a British TV comedy with Frankie Howard, and she, her character's name was Voluptua. <laughs> so, Voluptua. Actually named? I, <laughs> love, I love names like that, because like I have this one character I drew called Lesbos, Queen of the Universe. Yeah. And um, uh, it was meant to be a comic, but it, it, I couldn't get the artist to join me in writing. Like, he was good at drawing women. But I got to tell you, this uh, photo has been touched up with paint, and I can see it on her fingers, her right hand, uh, and the hair. That's right, yeah. 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 And her cheek, too. Uh, well, we can't have cheek. that, so we're going to move on from that then. So this is a Jenny Hanley, who was in Scars of Dracula, and a few other movies, not Hammer movies, but she was in some other ones. I think she was well, in a Bond as well. She's got more of a modern look to her. To like she was today. in that's a Bond. Sad. She was wow. in a Bond. Might have been on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Can't remember. But I remember her from a long-running British children's magazine program called Magpie, which was okay. on for several years in Britain at the sort of, you know, 5 p.m. period. For kids, once kids got home from school, she was one of the presenters, and she was one of my earliest crushes. Mm. She's got a cool like posture because she's actually standing strong. She's not yeah. posing. She's standing strong. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's and the was... classic hands on the hip. Showing strength. Yeah, that was Scars of Dracula. She was in. I just loved her from Magpie. She was I like that beautiful. photo of her. That's actually yeah, that's a great, great picture, picture, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is Imogen Hassel, Hassel from when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Actually, I love that movie. Yeah, actually, it's so. a good movie. It's a good movie. It is, and it's a great picture. It's very this much photo a B, is a it's very, very much picture. a B movie, but it's a, it's a fun movie. Yeah. Can you enhance a little? Just a little. <laughs> I'm not saying what part. Let's see which one you pick. <laughs> what are you like? Encouraging me. Oh That's encouraging me. Uh, I'm in trouble. Who else? We're, we're almost at the end of the list. There's, there's dozens I haven't got time to, to go over specifically. Oh, man. We, we may capture wrong. some more. Um, this is slightly more restrained. Barbara Shelley, who was in multiple, like eight or nine hammers. Uh, the Gorgon, which we're, we don't really have time to talk about much today. Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Um, I think she was in Quatermass as well. Quatermass in the Pit. That's her, I think. Yeah, from Quatermass. Yes. That is wow, her. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she really totally looks different. Wow. Yeah, she's a classy, classy lady. Well, she Hashtag save gingers, by the way. Save gingers and tartan right? skirts. 
She's wearing my <laughs> kilt. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Is that my your kilt. tartan? Is that your tartan? No, mine's more of a green blue thing. But, uh... Yeah, mine's the ugly yellow blue green thing. Oh. The, the, the McLeod tartan oh, that's yeah. just ugly as hell. Yeah, mine's more Duck Clan Douglas, Ugh. much more greens and blues. Uh, she also appeared Mine is in. She appears in one of my favorite non favorite movies of all time, which is not <laughs> polka dot. Sure. That's monkey Gary, pox. Gary's a poodle. Uh, Gary's is a poodle skirt. <laughs> just just think appears, of the identity of polka dot. <laughs> she appears in a film called The Village of the Damned. Great film, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. The not original. Hammer. Let's brilliant. Let's... Let's confirm that that's the original. Original. I was fixing to say, is it? it, it is is it's not uh, Children of the Damned? It's Black Village and White, of the right? Village of the Damned. Low right. budget British sci-fi. It's on the book. It's, uh, the Dunwich awesome. Cuckoos. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't it's John like Carpenter 50. do do a a, a Village of the Damned? This version was pretty good, but still not as good as the is original. Is it based this on this? This is the creepiest no, it's movie based on the book. Oh, okay. One of the creepiest movies ever made. And she's a the female lead. In it. It's a brilliant movie. If you've never seen it. Low budget British sci fi, but it's magnificent. It was definitely a, a shot at the Nazis. I always felt oh, with yeah. the blonde it was like children. 59, 60. I'm trying to go by memory. It's 1960, um, I think. 60. I think you're yeah. right. I think you're right. It's 60, black mm -hmm. and white, and it is spooky as. <laughs> crap. Is a little... And it really is one of George Sanders' best. Uh, oh, films oh, yeah. Before yeah. he killed it himself. Is. Great casting, it, great casting. Oh yeah, but just the eerie, the spookiness, the, the, it scared the shit out of me when I first saw it as a kid. Oh my God, you know. But um, anyway, uh, well, I'm not, yeah, I think that's the last Barbara Shelley picture, unfortunately. We'll make, see, we'll, see if we can call up some more later if we've got time. Then there was a couple more. Hazel Court, who's in The Curse of Frankenstein, uh, she was pretty, pretty neat in that. I thought, you know, uh, this is a very restrained photograph. And that was the second Hammer horror film released in '57. Yeah. Wow! Have apparently, have Village of the Damned is on HBO Max. You have to enhance that one anyway. because Dracula didn't come out. Or yeah, Dra was it Horror of Dracula. The first Dracula was '58. Uh, yeah, in Britain it was just called Dracula. In America it was called Horror of Dracula. So yeah. there's a difference in title, but. And there's another one, uh, an honourable mention, and as I, we've missed a few. Honourable mention would be Marie Devereaux from Brides of, Brides of Dracula, the non that is one of Christopher the best, Lee one. Uh, vampirous moments, right there. Yeah, yeah, she played that one great. That established a look for vampire yeah. films for female yeah. vampires. Yeah, Gee, yeah, spot on that look. You're right, Gene. It is. Really, and that Hammer did that so well. The sets were great. The locations were always in real-life spooky mansions. The costuming was great. Makeup. They had all the top-quality crew, and yet they could still make these movies relatively cheaply. Like, Dracula for Dracula cost £80,000 to make. I mean... Well, i got to mention yeah. that you can actually see it in the set, because that was my one beef, mm. was this is supposed to be some grand place and it's really a very tight set it's like a, a ship in a bottle moment uh because the entire thing takes place in this two level set and it just doesn't feel like a real castle and that was my uh, only beef with that movie oh i think i know what uh yeah so i'm being asked for a particular picture and i may well have it i think this is maybe the one that we're talking about Barbara Shelley in Dracula, Prince of Darkness. There we go. Yeah. Again, he's he needs to really wow. aim a bit lower. He's aiming too high. <laughs> well, well, check out this photo to the left there. Click on that one. Uh, see it there? That's the one. Yeah. Boom, baby. He's I wonder, the I mean, the Hammer had no idea how to market their movies, did they? No. <laughs> Not <at all. laughs> Hey, Chris, could you uh, act like you're going to bite her on the, you know, boob? <laughs> Enough, you perverts. I can't um, do it to my old man. I can't do so it. The, the, the ladies of, of, we've had the guys and the ladies, there are many, many more. I mean, you're talking 250 movies, and so there was lots of other key people that were in them. But, uh, I want you to cover those because of what I think I'd like to do now with your indulgence is uh, Imperatus and I put our heads together. We came up with 15 
movies we wanted to talk about. We're not suggesting that these are necessarily the best. I think they're all key in some way. Um, but you guys will all have your own opinions and ones that we've missed, and so will the chat, which is great. And we wanted to, to, we had some rules. We said, well, we don't want more than two of any particular, so only two Draculas, not six of them, you know, mm-hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we set a few ground rules and we picked 15 we thought were worth at least talking about. And we've got some pictures. And I've actually got the trailers from them. I think we can get away with playing them because they're all on YouTube anyway and I don't think anyone's going to complain. So right. um, if if you guys are okay for us to run through that list. No, yeah, um, let's, yeah, let's I'm do this. in the private chat my uh, uh, my list. <laughs> Fire yeah, away. I think what what we'll do at the end is we'll go over the ones we've all missed and and ones that we didn't put in our list and talk about those too. So, uh, yeah, and we'll we talk about a few my, that were honorable mentions. I'm just looking at uh, Joe's. Uh, well, I'm going to bet values. that you're going to get all of mine. Uh, possibly, there's some we've left out because really we had another one from the series in it. And we didn't want to repeat you know we try to fit in as much breadth as, as we could so well, uh, show us more harlots show us more harlots i like the way you said breadth breadth <laughs> there will be more harlots in the stills that i'm going to show so um i'm going to start by trying to play That's an interesting lisp you got there when you're saying breasts yes. <laughs> so just bear with me here while i do some manipulation of screens because i'm going to be playing videos and stills and then we'll talk a little bit uh share i want to present the share screen oh, I'll stop that one present share screen so the first one we'll talk about is dracula known as horror of dracula obviously in the u.s mm-hmm. this is the quad these these are all the quad posters um so that's uh Peter Cushing is getting hit, top billing above the, the title, as you can see. Christopher Lee below. Michael Goff's also in that one. So let's have a quick look at the trailer. Uh, I need to just remove it from the stream to make sure I've shared the audio, then I'll reshare it. So just give me one second. Uh, right. Let's see if this plays. Can you hear it? Yeah, I got it. I think we should go be okay with these. Shouldn't get struck for them, I don't think. Dracula, the terrifying, the feared, who sleeps in the tombs of the dead by day. Who owns their catalog now? And arises at night. There's multiple people. His terror yeah, upon it's the innocent and the unsuspecting. You must help me. You must. You're my only hope. You must. Show us your boobs first. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I want. <laughs> Have you ever seen that Doctor Who Kabushu commercial where uh, John Pertwee says? Show us your boobs. I don't know if I have. Google it. So this was uh, 1958. Uh, that obviously. This is not Lucy, the sister. I'm not doing these in any order, by the way. Possessed and corrupted by the evil of Dracula. How do you Possessed and. I love the way he says it. Yeah. And corrupted. 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 Come to end his reign of terror. Oh, yeah, Peter Cushing one of the most beautiful accents, Peter Cushing. And Peter oh, Cushing's yeah. delivery of any line was just perfect. You ordered a meal. He was high London at his accent. My duty to serve you. Even though I'm not sure where he's from, that's a uh, high London accent. Yeah, yeah he's from the, so, the home counties, as they call them, round about London. I think this is the anguished man who fears for the lives of his beloved. Yeah, and I'm not, as I say, I'm not showing these in order of what we think are the greatest or not. It's just 15 randomly chosen of, of ones we think are important. Well, this is really, even though in the original Universal film, they released it as a romantic film on Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. this was the most sexualized Dracula ever. His version. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Also, the soundtrack and the, the music is just yeah. full on in your face. It's, it's incredible yeah, heavy, orchestration. Very heavy music. Very I love heavy, it. yeah. You got that. Terrence Fisher. Came out. Fisher, Fisher and Hines. There's a name from our childhood right there. Terrence Fisher, Anthony Hines. Um, yeah, so. Not the first, uh, there's the earlier ones in the 15 I'm going to talk about, but that one's one of the key, obviously the, a key one. They'd had the success of the Frankenstein, which we're going to cover later, and 
and he wanted to move on to the next monster or property. And they had the deals with Universal by now. Um, so a bit of a small one, but uh, Christopher Lee, in effect, the that eyes, is the, blood the I, eyes always got me as a kid, man. That's right, the blood yep. in the eyes. They, mm -hmm. they see nobody. I mean, that when I think of Dracula, that's the image I think of. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No doubt. Made for only eighty thousand pounds as well. You know, it just wasn't like it was a huge. I mean, if you scaled that up to today, it'd be a couple of million probably, but it's still not much if you think about it. So, um, and it's certainly one of the earliest I can remember seeing uh, as a kid. And it's and it had... that a movie that was eighty thousand pounds, but it was made. We're still talking about damn near eighty years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it, how good it was. I mean, yes, it looks a little dated, but because it's set in a gothic era, it's not that dated. Oh, and here you go. It's $819,850 today. I, I mean, it's still like, that would be it's the almost a budget. That would be the catering budget for a Marvel movie. But they had right? no inflation. Everything was cheap when they were making it. So it's it, really that spends like a, about $2 million, I would say. Yeah. And when you have castles in the country you're filming it in, you don't need to worry about building sets or using a soundstage. That's well, they did use a soundstage for this. And that's part of my, my beef with the first Dracula film was that it wasn't wide open enough. It needed to be bigger. But mm. that was what they got stuck with because the studio they were shooting at. Yeah. And it introduces a lot of the, the stuff you'd see in, in Dracula and other horror movies. You know, a lot of blood, blood being splat, splattered on the coffins. And um, you've got the, the low-cut dresses. <laughs> I'm not seeing so many of them here, of course. But, um, dark brooding sexuality, I think, is the, the term that I see written in books about it. Funnily enough, Harker, is, Harker what, was killed in this. Jonathan Harker's in it, but he's Harker killed. Harker is dead, yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's Michael and they Wolf switched the roles to uh, Mina and uh, Wilhelmina and um, what's her name, Lucy. Lucy, yeah, yeah. And there's uh, Michael Goff trying to figure out how he can get rid of his wife, um, so he can get one of these hot <laughs> vampire women. Um, there's a lot of biting going on. Uh, it's just great. It's glorious fun. The music really does pound away and enhances every everything. It's it's a great movie. That was one thing I was noticing rewatching a lot of these movies for the stream was just how awesome the soundtracks always were. Oh god, yeah. I mean, they're 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 the cinem they are the um. Who does the music for? The music was done by James Bernard for many of these. He was the composer and conductor that did a lot of them. I don't know which orchestras he used, but James Bernard was the guy that did a lot. I was he thinking more the writer of the music, yeah. Uh, well, they were all originally. Well, he was he was the writer mm -hmm. of a lot of it. He did the orchestrations. Most of it was original material, um, original soundtracks, not taken from previous classical. Yeah, because uh, to my knowledge, he was the composer, not just the conductor. Right. Yes. He, uh, I, as for the the, com I don't know the orchestras used, but a lot of the scores were by James Bernard. This is uh, Valerie Gaunt, and she doesn't look gaunt, I have to say. Uh, no. no. No, she doesn't look very gaunt at all. She's it healthy. Enhance, enhance. She's healthy. No. <laughs> <laughs> and Cushing, of course, is Van Helsing, a role he would play so many times. He practically owned that role. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff. Lovely movie. Deservedly, um, you know, known in the... It's one that always springs to mind when you and they made what seven more or seven in total Dracula films. Something it's still like that, the first, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was a bunch of them. Yeah, no I mean, you could talk about all seven, some were not so great. That one it deserves to be here because it was the first and it set the, the template. And, and in fact, it wasn't just that Hammer impacted their own subsequent films, they impacted the whole of the horror genre going forward, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, is good stuff. So so Plague of the Zombies is number two on our list. Um, notable for a couple of things. One is Andre Morel had the lead, but for those who are fans of Blake Seven, you may see further down the list, Jacqueline Pierce. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Sir, Avon Serverland. Lives. 
Irvil and Avon lives. Avon so lives. that's what I love about these. You'll, you'll see someone and go, wait a minute, they were in Doctor Who, or they were. <laughs> so, the, Plague of the Zombies. The battle, and for the Battletech nerds in the group, Alex Davian. <laughs> yes, yes, there's always that stuff. Uh, you can see in these people that have gone on to do other things. Now, this was 1966, directed by John Gilling, not Terence Fisher. And Clifford Evans was in it too. He was in a lot of uh, lot of Hammer. And I'm going to play the trailer, so just give me a second here. Didn't he go away? <clears throat> Present video file. The Plague of the Zombies trailer. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you brought that one in. That's on my list too. This coach is bound for a terrifying destination. Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go with Chicago, but there we go. Chicago, no same thing. Can remain at peace. <laughs> zombie boobs. Village of the zombie boobs. This land of the zombies. Hit her, but leave the, zoo, the boobs. In hey, this place, if, no one is safe. If, if, if you get her fast no enough, it's still warm. Yeah. From witchcraft. yeah. <laughs> Superstition. It's still warm. Yeah. Fear. Before they fall off. Yeah. <laughs> Even Sir James Forbes, the clear-headed man of science, oh, oh, was around. forced to accept yep. the horrible There you go. Facts. Young Martinus also says that he saw something on the moors, something that he insists was his brother. But we know that his brother is dead. We also know that he is not lying in his coffin. Someone in this village is practicing witchcraft. That corpse wandering on the moors is an undead a zombie. <laughs> A place dominated by men without morals. By men with horses. Are <laughs> sounds like, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like the United States. <laughs> when Celia <laughs> Forbes hated the young squire, it was dangerous. But when she fell in love with him, it was lethal. I love the drums. Yeah. Because it's voodoo. Yeah, I was fixing to say, I, I love the fact that they used voodoo in, yeah. in, in this one. It's uh, not, not a, a, a poison or a, a drug or a plague. Right. It's voodoo. As a drummer myself, no horror uh, is so perfect without some percussion. Yeah. Indeed. But just the, 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 the use of something other than uh -oh. a virus or a plague is great. No now, I, I just looked it up, by the way, uh, Brian. Yeah. And even in the uh, official release of some of the music on that you can find on Amazon, they do not mention the name of the orchestra. No, hmm. it's weird. Eh? I wonder if they had an in-house... Uh, I'm assuming that's exactly what it is, that it was their own orchestra. It had well, the Baron be in the chat movie. is right. Best Sorry, zombie boobs, Return of the Living Dead. Best zombie boobs. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Plague of the Zombies. No doubt. Uh, 1966, for me, uh, I haven't. I didn't watch rewatch the whole thing. I, I didn't have enough time. I watched oh. bits of it. Uh, and it, it to me, it set the template for what was to come with zombie movies. Uh, I like think Night so, the, too. Night of the Living Dead owes a lot, I think, to this. And other zombie movies, too. Yeah, because um, this was the first representation of zombies is actually dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, being brought back, but who said something about drums? Who said that? Uh, well, me, we were talking about that because it's voodoo. This is it's voodoo. No, who said they were a drummer? I believe that was I was Lord Toth. Oh, Lord Toth. Yes, okay, I'm the a whole family are drummers. My yes. father was a drummer back was in the uh, uh, 60s, which is why I came to be as the oldest son, and uh, because <laughs> he was a part of a band, and you know, and uh, he met this girl, and they were all eight. They were eighteen, and yeah, things happened, and I came to be. So yeah, my whole family are all drummers. I'm a drummer because of my older brother. He taught me, and uh, but I was Courtney. I just wanted to share this. Courtney said, "Do you know how to 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 shut a drummer up? Put sheet music in front of him." <laughs> hey, I, I was like, told "Fuck all you! I know how to read sheet music." <laughs> didn't I? Didn't I tell all the drummer jokes on a show recently? Yeah, 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 you did. Yeah, you, you did. call a drummer with a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 
Homeless. That's it. Yeah. That was the same night, dude. That was the same yeah. night. What, like, what I think why is are you needed. shitting on drummers? Because <laughs> a lot of it's accurate. That's why, G. That's right. <laughs> so the, yeah, it's not like we're shitting on musicians. No. Oh, oh fuck you! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you but uh, right. Right. getting this back to the look- movie, the 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 uh, I, I think it's really neat. First of all, the gray skin that's that's a telltale uh, zombie thing. Zombie and, thing, and, yeah. And the thing that the, the thing that I immediately thought of seeing this was uh, the one that um, the guy that She's did Nightmare nipple. on Elm Street made. It was supposed to be loosely based on a true story. And it had to do with voodoo, had to do with the zombie uh, drug that they, uh, a pharmaceutical company was trying to find. Oh, yeah, that's Black Rainbow. But, mm-hmm. hey, can you zoom in on that one? No, the uh, name I of the movie it. was uh, The Serpent and the Rainbow. Oh, the Serpent the and the Rainbow. Yeah, but yeah. Cr- down, down. Yeah, down. Wes Craven made it. All, it, all the way down, all the way down. There yeah. it is. You can see it. Oh, yeah. oh tiny that's zombie. It's a little movie. nipplage. It's a little nipplage. nipplage. Uh-oh. I do like, and she's actually Checking out the racks. On, I like yeah, the folks. expression she's putting on. She's acting She looks like she's got that. For that new movie, Smile. Yeah. Yeah, right. Here's some of the guys um, straight out of a Michael Jackson video. But, uh, yeah. But that look, yeah, that look has been copied, adapted. Uh, yeah. Certainly George Romero. He uh, definitely else. used it in his first two zombie movies, no oh, doubt. I think he paid tribute to it. Yeah, he's paid mm-hmm. tribute to this. I, I find it hard to think of any earlier movies that involve zombies that looked anything as good as this. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, actually, my God. Anima Sorry. shitting on drummers. Uh oh. It's true. An orchestra has musicians and then the percussion, percussion the corner. corner. No, Actually, I'm going to go pee now. Anima. I'm going to go cool off. <laughs> Anima, I would suggest they don't need a corner, they need them in another room. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Uh, this was filmed in court actually was filmed in uh, the same sets as another hammer movie, The Reptile. They just used the oh, same and I sets. love that movie. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be a Cornish village. They used they reused they did that a lot. They reused the sets for various films, Save and it, money. It, it got a lot of criticism at the time because it features a lot of decapitation, particularly with shovels. And shovels are used as weapons a lot in Hammer movies, mm-hmm. cutting heads off and stabbing people in the chest with them. So I like that. Yeah, who needs an M sixteen? You can just use a shovel. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so some good looking stuff that, that's that's a great uh some great makeup there when you look at that you, there's yeah. nothing on like yeah, the walking dead looks any better hurt. yeah yeah that, that looks like it came straight out of a romero movie yeah it, does. That, it, it really does. does it looks as good as anything you'll see in a modern zombie film in my opinion see you buddy so oh, it's a great God. movie lots of the usual chilling Atmosphere. There was, Hammer was about atmosphere. Tons of atmosphere. Some of it was nitrogen, some was oxygen, a little bit of carbon dioxide. Well, they used the, the thing that I love about Hammer films is the fact that they did create atmosphere w- through sound design, music, and lighting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's it, it was very effective filmmaking. Hammer, mm-hmm. what Hammer did for a micro budget. Was amazing, oh, but that's know. Britain. Yeah. Britain, everything was shot on a dime. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's they're like, all eating. They're all eating chip butties for their dinner, and it was, you know. Was, I joked one time that Jerry Anderson was using marionettes because they couldn't afford actors, hmm. and because uh, their budgets were so small for all his TV shows. Yeah. So we're gonna move on to 1964's Kiss of the Vampire. Because who doesn't like being kissed by a vampire? Yeah. So oh, of again, course. another subway poster. Right, yeah, when, the, right, right, when to run, right when I have to right when I have to run, you're talking about Kiss of the Vampire. Oh, you gotta run? Uh, well, just five, five yeah. minutes. Watch the trailer. Oh, okay. I'll watch the trailer and then I'll have to run. It's Thanksgiving so, here in Canada, so well, I gotta go for Canada, dinner. Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. I'm Thanks, in man. Canada I and that. I'm ignoring Thanksgiving, so <laughs> this is more important. <laughs> you and ninety percent of the population, they just like yeah. the day off. Well, that's because yeah. you're Scottish and you're bitter. I don't give thanks for anything. I, I yeah, exactly right. You're bitter about everything. Yeah. You're <laughs> right. not wrong. So Check here it. we go. <clears throat> Check out Ironcaster. He's got the poster for this one. Oh, Ironcaster's here. Honeymoon. Hey, Ironcaster. How's it going? Nice to see you, buddy. Of each other's company. Knowing the sublime happiness of the kiss of love. 
if you get the link down, Castor, you're welcome of love to join. Is a stranger here, where only evil is good, and the only kiss. Can we get it to him? Of a vampire. Yeah. You know what I got a vampire. You. Can you get it to him? Yes. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll uh, Iron Castor, I'll DM vampires. it to you on Twitter. Vampires. Human vampires. Welcome to join. Another and Andre Morel. The Kiss of a Vampire is a spine-chilling drama of two young people who strayed by chance into a nightmare in a twilight world of terror. Look for Devin. Jennifer Danielle. Yes. I want you to initiate Mr. Harcourt into our society. Do you understand what I mean? Just go with it. Oh, the bats from hell. Carriers for pets got out again. <laughs> <laughs> Iron, right. Iron Caster, check your DMs on uh, in Twitter. color, <laughs> in living color. I love living the color. um the the bats, the ending, the bats being released from hell and doing the dirty work. Not quite sure why that it was bats from hell and why they were going to attack the bad guys, but they did. You know, uh, but another great ter- that's Terence Fisher directed one and he yeah. was absolutely one of the biggest names in, and i'm sure for you too uh, no sorry it wasn't i'm sorry it wasn't a terence fisher it wasn't terence so. fisher no don no. sharp he was a major yeah, sharp. force don sharp sorry yes ah. not terence fisher. he did most of but anthony hines did write it um and it was set in Bar- bavaria around a vampire cult it was originally meant to be a Dracula movie, but that never worked out. So they just repurposed the script. And it was great because they could then make a different vampires that didn't have, any, have anything to do with Dracula. You know, it gave them more uh, leeway in, in uh, plotting. You know, they could do other things. Which made it a much better movie, in my opinion. Yeah, it did. Yeah, because there's enough Dracula to go around as it is, you know. So it was nice to, to have something different. And um, All right, I'm sending you that or Dracula poster I did. Brian, of course, Darius shows up right, right after now. the bats. <laughs> yeah. And, and Darius Bill shows Bellies. up just as I'm heading out. So great to be here. Thanks, everybody. Thanks Happy Thanksgiving to all my fellow Canadians. And thank you for the invite. This oh, was amazing. Oh, Americans. Okay, fine. <laughs> Thanks Happy for coming Thanksgiving on, to you Americans, too, next month. Uh, but... Uh, Thanks, 70s. It's been a blast. Everybody no, here on the panel, awesome. The chat, you're amazing. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for Take coming. Care, it was good to hear Happy you. Happy Canadian you, Thanksgiving. Man. Appreciate you care, being everyone. here. Appreciate yep. you being here, mate. Bye. I'd love to play him out with something um, groovy on the video side, but I'm, all I've got is stuff for other people. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, um, anyway. Where were we? Yeah, seventies. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Ironcaster said he'll join as soon as he can make a pit stop. Yeah, no, no problems. Uh, let me get this back here. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, loved this because it wasn't about Dracula. It allowed them to do some other stuff. Um, had also shovels, more shovels. Lots of people being killed with shovels, which is always fun. I think, in fact, this may have opened with a shovel in a coffin scene. Um. Those of you 40k nerds, stop shouting about Craig. Uh, <laughs> and yet fact, shovels are still legal in England. They are just, well, only blunt ones, though. I, I mean, mean, you can still get the job done. It just takes longer. Hang on. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here it is. I have no, no audio for this clip, but... Um... Oh, there is audio. <laughs> That's how the movie opens. And I always thought that was brilliant. Just, you know... That's a lot of blood. Anyway. It is. It would have looked like a real tit if there was no nothing going on in there. But you know, it's, uh, um, yeah, I always love that, that image I sent you. You sent me something. Sorry, Did I, you get I that find memo I sent you. Did you get the memo? The memo. <laughs> I, I don't know if I do. It's I'm in. Famous. It's on Twitter. All right. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to see. I'm glad my executive producer Darius is here now because. Um, you can help control shit. <laughs> yeah, I, Darius I Munchausen. 
the single safest the, uh, munch house. You sent me an image. Is it? Oh God! You didn't have to send me naked pictures of yourself. No, it's my penis. It's okay. I, no, no, I don't have a microscope, so we can't wait, see. Wait, that's not part of your memory. You mean your this one shaved into a G? <laughs> You're it's my member. It's my member. Hang on. Ship. You're talking about this? Yeah, that's the poster I painted for. The, they wanted a hammer style poster, and you can yeah. see the wrestlers that are all approved to be. They've all agreed to be in the film. And Kieran Hines has uh, agreed to be in it. Karen, Karen Hines agreed, and the only holdout is um, I'm not going to say his name on the left, and I don't know what's going on with him. Those are a couple of those guys are well, aside from Stone Cold Steve Austin, some of those other and Bret Hart. But that's a hell of a painting, and that is my hammer. Yeah. No. It's a nice picture. I love of, hammer posters. There's a nice picture of my house in the top left. Yes, that's in that's in the Highlands of Canada. <laughs> yeah. The wee Highlands of the Canada. Wee highlands. The wee Highlands. Oh yeah, what do they call it up there? Uh just like a like Nova a Scotia is what they call it. <laughs> We've got a name. Well, what, a name. What's the the Queen's uh, Scottish getaway? Balmoral. Yeah, yeah. They have like I don't know, like Moors or no. Charles is in charge. It's immoral. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to make right. up for lost time. Yeah. Let's so let's uh, yeah. Lots of lots of females biting people. Who's going to complain about that? Who could ever complain about that? I would be leaping in there. I love the attention to detail again with the costumes and the car and whatever. It's just, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's a great movie. And the swarm of bats at the end is just phenomenal. If, especially bats. the throttle lever for the car. There wasn't even a transmission yet. It was just that's a right. throttle. That's right, yeah. And I'm, surpri I'm surprised that they even have a car this old in that, those films. Those things didn't last a long time. And by the it, it 1960s... Yeah, they last longer than my Kia. Yeah, yeah. The last long longer than your average General Motors these days. But, uh, <laughs> oh, dude, don't get me started. I'm an old school yes, Chevy Baron. man, and these things are pieces of shit. There's an early role for uh, Russell Crowe at the back. Now. Those really look like Doctor Who costumes there. <laughs> well, they really that, do. Yeah. That's why I like this picture because it, it, it those costumes look kind of modern. Yeah. And yet it's a gothic horror. Right. And they, but you the look Mandarin at that, you make high color that, like, isn't what makes it modern. It's the cut. Over the yeah. breath. Can, can, we, like, the boob can we like bring back the boob window as just a common thing in dresses again? The boob window, yeah. yeah. I was a fan. Shall we enhance? No. Enhance. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Victorian beehive. Yeah. The Vic yeah, that's right. She was in the Renettes, this girl. That's right. <laughs> Baron, Baron Von Headbanger uh, had a question. The B-52. Was that Claren Hines in the, on the post? It, it was Kieran Yeah, Hines, I, I had it? already said yes to him. Yes, oh, okay. it, it was Syrian. So that's uh, that was one of our what, third choice, Kiss of the Vampire. We'll move on now to choice number four in our 15 Imperatus and I. choices. We have <laughs> the Curse of Frankenstein, the first one. You would think they would have called the first one just Frankenstein, but they didn't. So no, Certificate X, the big British, that was the badge of honour. You got that? You knew there was no snotty-nosed kids were going to be watching the movie. <laughs> they want you to know. They wanted you to know. Hammer wanted you to know. There's so much sex and violence in this. So, and that's uh, why we love it. But this was 1957. I guess you could say it's not the earliest movie that's actually going to be on this list, but it's it's actually the one that started it all for them in a modern sense for Hammer. And if it's you think big... about it, Hammer started the whole process towards rated R. Yeah. He did. He did. Because they really did push it with the violence, the blood, and the, and the sex. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because we had the Hayes Code. Or, yeah, uh, I forget which ones for movies and which ones for comics. But yeah, we we couldn't uh, show anything uh, that was wasn't approved true. by the priest. They had one priest approving all the movies, and uh, and then they rolled out the MPAA. So we had like we had G and just G and R. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So just <laughs> in the late sixties. Confirmed. So you guys are still on the panel. You're all still okay for time because we're probably going to run for at least another hour. I think to finish yeah, yeah. this. I am uh, going to bow out here in a few minutes, drop. but I want to finish yeah. watching your list. 
Uh, well, you'll never get to the end of it because there's 15. You son of a before. bitch. Well, uh, I mean, is it bow out or bend over? It's bend over. <laughs> it's bend over and film a cavity. That uh, well-known comedy. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a bad, it's a bad dinner time for me, so I'm going to go ahead and take off. Um, thanks for having me, 70s. I'm, I'm, i got to uh, be tough for really the show. I'll this. stay for a few more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my my <laughs> pleasure, uh, Joe. Just uh, let me just give us a quick rundown on uh, stuff you're doing. Hi, oh, my name man. is Joe, uh, and I uh, <laughs> I draw comics. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm doing Joe's voice. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> you look stares at boobs. Gary knows just uh, he know uh, he knows what's up. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm a boob aficionado. I'm more of an ass man, but I do dig a nice pair of <laughs> um. But anyway, yeah, I just got my website up and running. Uh, if you can drop that in the chat for me, that'd be nice. But make uh, sure to add the T in there because he did not. Yes, know how to I forgot to. Name. Yeah, I forgot uh, to put the T in there. It's just it's like in the my private uh, chat. Yeah, it's in the yeah. private yeah. chat. It's the yeah. second yeah, the one. The link there. I gave is the one that yeah, works. The one, the one that he put up there is the one that works. <laughs> okay. But I'm anyway, just, doing it now. just started it up Sunday. Uh, there's no merch on there yet, but my wife has been working hard on it. Uh, we're gonna have some stuff. Uh, apparently, is I've already got a hit. Apparently, I've already got my a uh, hit on my hands. Uh, this coffee mug, it, uh, Martin Acosta wants one off of your show, Gary. Uh, the privateer coffee mug, and uh, half my family wants one. As soon as they saw it in the videos, they're like, "Oh, because you know my dad's from Boston, so we're all Patriots fans." So hell yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, you can find me on the YouTubes and the Twitters and everything else at this uh, username, uh, Joe's Atmosphere with an F instead of a PH, just because I knew nobody would be spelling it that way. And uh, I'll be uh, I'll be in the chat tomorrow night for Halloween on Toxic Tuesday. I don't cool. know if I'll make it on the show or not, but I'll be in the chat. Uh, and uh, you get you guys can go to my uh, YouTube page and see the rundown of the shows. I don't want to eat up too much time listing them, but I'll be on again Wednesday with uh, State of the Atmosphere next. So I'll you guys have a great one. Hey, Thanks do for it, man. Me. You Thanks guys are all welcome there. Uh, no, you know I your, that. Okay, you're a fellow veteran. Yes, I'm saluting you, mate. I'm I'm saluting you. Ever. Thank you, sir. That's for Joe. <laughs> I love okay, that, man. We are welcoming to the show um, the wonderful Ironcaster. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Until about a minute ago, I got a cat here. To are you lost to that in right. space again? I'm going to find yeah. my way home one of these days. <laughs> Thank you for joining, my like, friend. I really appreciate it. And... Um, it's it's Look, awesome. I'm looking I said forward I was going to... out for I was go, I said I was going out for some milk and a pack of cigarettes, and like I'm still trying to find my way home. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for coming aboard. This uh, we're having a good a lot of fun, and um... I'm going to leave, but I want to leave on a story. Of okay, you just reminded me of a story by Richard Harris, the other great uh, drunk of the UK actor, other than all, and he was good friends with Oliver Reed. Uh, Richard Harris uh, left home one day to get a pack of fags, as he told his wife, uh, the corner store. And standing out in front of the store, he noticed on a newspaper that his favorite team, I can't remember if it's Ulster or who it was, but he uh, saw that they were playing. And so he went and disappeared for two weeks following them, just around touring with the soccer team. And he never told his wife. And he showed up back home, standing at the front door, being gone for two weeks, figuring out what he was going to say. He finally rung the doorbell because he was afraid to unlock the door and come in. She answered the door and he says, why didn't you pay the ransom? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Richard nice. Harris, man. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Uh, pop culture, minefield, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in the mornings, blah, 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 blah. Uh, TGIF, blah, blah, blah. Saturday morning fun time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I get to hang out with 70s, twi well, twice a week, every other week. I get to hang out with you on your channel and then also on Toxic Tuesday, which I love doing. And so I'll see you guys later. And I pretty much know everybody here. So bye, guys. 
Always Later, a pleasure, man. mate. Thanks Later, for coming. Mate. Yeah, Gary. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Cheers. Good one. You too. Looks like Chuck's taken old one eye to the optometrist. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm just sending a link to Des Wolfen on Twitter. So hang on a sec while I do that. There you go, Das Wolf and Twitter DM'd. Right, uh, so let's return to the, the matter at hand. We have a few movies still to go through. Oh, let's have to, a quick look at the trailer quick. for... I wonder if the that, like, I actually have this on my... Oh, oh look at that! <laughs> oh, we were just talking about that one, too. We just talked about that one. That is beautiful. Awesome. Uh, Shout Factory does a, a lot of... Yeah, Shout work. Factory loves Hammer. They do. It's hard not to, really. Yeah. Oh. They get so much of my my money. Welcome, Das Wolfen. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, great to have you aboard, mate. So um, let's just play this. Uh, let me get this trailer played for the next one on our list: the Curse of Frankenstein. So you see, my producer has left. No. Uh, Executive producer. producer's here, though. Uh, because Frankenstein, uh, which one are you looking for? The trailer for no, hang on, it's here. I've got them separately. The trailer files, here we go. We hope more than a hundred years ago, in a mountain village in Switzerland, lived a man whose strange experiments with the, the man dead hard of hearing <laughs> have since become a legend. A legend that is still told with horror the world over. I love that set. Yeah, the set Good is fun. magnificent. Yeah. Just, just open the door. But now's the time to go through that door and find what lies beyond it. I Got a spare leg I can horror. use. We've discovered <laughs> the source of light itself, and we've used it to restore a creature that was dead. This is Frankenstein, who revolted against nature, who experimented with the devil and was forever cursed. His unwilling collaborator was Paul Kremp. I can't prove you murdered, but I can stop you using his brain. Why? He has no further use for it? Don't be a fool! Be careful! Do damn it! Only two women ever entered this house of evil. Elizabeth, come back! Elizabeth, Come back and he shoots her. <laughs> and Face. Justine the maid, who found the gun again. Some secret rendezvous with her master. Won't you understand you're in real danger? What Victor is doing is dangerous to everyone in the house. Now you cannot possibly conceive what dreadful. Now take your kit off. What are you trying to tell me, Paul? That Victor's wicked? Insane? Wicked? Insane? Evil? Call Frankenstein what you will. Toxic. A demon had made a man Toxic made masculinity. Monster, and now the monster was the master. Paul, oh, what are you going to do? For your sake and to protect Elizabeth, I've so far kept silent. But now I shall go to the authorities and have them destroy that creature. And see that you pay for these atrocities. No! Here we go. Finally. The dream team, Terence Fisher, Anthony Hines. Um, yeah, that one really, this one really got the ball rolling. A huge international hit for them. First Hammer color movie. And this was the that, first one I saw, I think, out of all of them. Yeah, it could be, mate. Yeah, it was so 1957. I think it, uh, it had, um, it had a big impact. I mean, I wasn't around at the time, but everything I've read suggests it was a big hit worldwide and it's still well known today everywhere. So really started that for ball rolling for Hammer for the colour stuff. And uh, the sets, somebody mentioned the sets. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, the archetypal mad scientist set. Yep. What's all those things going round and round? What do they do? What are they for? <laughs> I don't know, but they look cool. <laughs> they look cool. That thing that goes up and down, what the hell is that doing? It was made for less money than stuff. Dracula, too. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Less money, indeed. 65,000 pounds for that one. If such a thing was possible. But, um, 
Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's the the, the Frankenstein series. I mean, they made God knows how many of them in the end, six or seven, um, with variable effect. And some of them were pretty good, um, but this one is the classic. Uh, it's it's just so archetypal. I think really, it's 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 everything that came after just it set the tone for Hammer. The color, the look, the sets, costumes, the. Uh, almost stage-like acting of a lot of it, because the sets were quite small. Acted well, like they were on stage. I really like with this, ultimately with the, this whole series, how uh, Peter Cushing is this... His uh, Dr. Frankenstein is this man who will stop at nothing to achieve science. Mm. Anything that gets in his way will be sacrificed without hesitation. Pure mm -hmm. neutral evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he almost swung in the, in the movies between good and evil. Sometimes he was more driven by good, and sometimes he was like, you fucking, you're an evil bastard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're just going to do anything because you want to do it. The hubris. I think uh, I might like this a hair better than the original one. Just a hair. Yeah, and they made it different from the uh, universal monster because they were still worried before these deals they made that they were going to get uh, into trouble. So they made the monster look quite different. And there's Christopher Lee uh, in his full oh. makeup. I still didn't recognize him. Yeah, still pretty effective, I would say. Yeah. This was really, I think, yeah. He, he got a lot of notoriety out of playing that part. It's a lot more um, realistic Frankenstein than, than the, you know, the, the original flathead. Frankenstein. Yeah, the flathead the with the bolts mm. out of the neck. Just going... Argh. Yeah, the bolts. That's right. Yeah, what the bolts? <laughs> you know what? I'm a skilled scientist and surgeon, but I'm going to use a six-inch bolt here. <laughs> well, one thing about this movie, a little bit more so than Dracula, was considering this came out, what'd you say, 57? 57, yeah. 57. Yep. Some of the stuff that they showed in this movie, like no movie coming out of America in that time frame was showing the same level of gore or anything, really. Yeah, it, it, they were unique at the time, these movies. I mean, horror as a genre, genre it kind of died away once the Universals made a fool of themselves in the end. So Yeah, because this, at this time frame in the States, it was a lot of sci-fi. Yeah, and it was monster sci-fi, like the blob mm -hmm. and, you know, various big spiders and that kind of stuff, alien invasion stuff. This was back to the, the more the, the traditional monsters. from the, And they went back to the source material for the novel. Well, I think uh, cowboys were also big at that time in the in the uh, in the states. Yeah. Oh yeah, westerns were huge yeah. in the fifties. So they did, uh, and then Valerie Gaunt too was the uh, decollage du jour in this particular one. Um, yeah, the the uh, the use of the the source novel gathered them a lot of um, praise at the time, you know, because it tried to remain uh, true to that, uh, certainly mm -hmm. within the limits of what you have to do to adapt it for a movie. So great. Yeah, you know, it is a classic. It will probably be a classic that will be remembered long from now, just because of its impact. Wait, you uh, mean people like it when you stick to the source material? Yes, they love it. That's my point. That was what was kind of what I was getting at. You know, who knew? <laughs> uh, well, Gary actually left us. So my apologies, Gary. He left his list of favorite um, um, movies, Hammer movies, in the private chat. I'll have to remember to read that later. But anyway. Um, I'm sure there was a couple of jokes I was going to make about Frankenstein, but I don't think I will. I think I'll let it rest on the fact that it was a fantastic movie and really got the ball rolling for Hammer, and, and we should all be grateful for that. Uh, so let's move on. And we'll, we'll, we'll probably that was 1957. The next movie on our list is way forward from that, and and introduced a very different feel for Hammer. We're going to cover, uh, if I can just get it up on the screen, The Vampire Lovers <laughs> is next. Um, 1970, The Vampire Lovers. Oh, Featuring, yeah, blood scissoring. Yeah, blood scissoring. Beautiful temptress or bloodthirsty monster? Why not have both? Depends on the time of the month. That's right. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Why do we have to? Yeah. Why do we have to choose? Um, <laughs> starring Ingrid Pitt, Kate O'Mara, both lovely actresses. 
Don Adams, she's great in it too. Peter Cushing gets the... Uh, <laughs> whatever. They needed a man. <laughs> so, hey, you know what? Peter's around. We'll get him to do it. <laughs> well, George like, Cole, he's the guy holding up the uh, the sword and dagger like it's going to work as a cross. That's right. Yeah, and oh. George Cole went on to be in a show for years on British TV called Minder. He was the star of a show called Minder with Dennis Waterman, who also did Hammer movies. So, well, we tried um, to call, we tried to get a hold of uh, P- Christopher Lee, but after seven vampire movies, he hung up when we when we even start, started started right. with the V. <laughs> <laughs> so this one was um, the first part of a. Th- what became a three-movie cycle. They were all connected because this was the Karnstein trilogy. So rather than bringing Dracula into it again, they said, let's create this family of vampires in um, Castle Karnstein in Austria. And they passed from generation to generation. Uh, And so each movie in that series was like 100 years later than the one before. And really, this was their attempt to now bring in a lot more eroticism um, the Blood Nymphs, they market it as the Blood Nymphs. Mm. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the trailer then. Uh, the Vampire Lovers, here we go. Come with us if you dare into a twilight world of unspeakable horror. You must die. Lovely crew scene there. Everybody must die. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sample, if you dare. The deadly passion of the vampire lovers. <laughs> you can tell it's much more upbeat than the vampire lovers. Perverted creatures of the night more find boobage. their victims everywhere. The unsuspecting merrymakers in glittering ballrooms with their young and tender throats. The sleeping beauties whose troubled dreams turn into real terrifying nightmares. It was a cat! A huge cat! For God's sake, save her! their evil hearts are still for all eternity. If one remains, yes, even one, there will be thousands more. Beware. It's a smoking jacket. <laughs> Beware the cold caress, the kiss that kills. Beware the vampire lovers. <sighs> ah, it's all good, clean fun. I think it's a werewolf movie. <laughs> I, almost, yeah. I think what they're the the funny thing about that is that the really the I got ghost story from that. The trailer there is showing isn't showing any of the lesbian scenes that started to creep in between those girls. Um, it's avoiding those, but they're making it. They make a major part of the, uh, the movie. But uh, Peter Cushing seems a little bit out of place in this one. Um, <laughs> Well, he's like, what the fuck am I doing here? Uh, I, I, I didn't know Peter Cushing was part of the Beatles. That's right. This is a, <laughs> General this is Pepper. Pepper. Not, General Pepper's band. But, um, but he's playing some general. He's certainly not playing Van Helsing. But um, this was a very different Hammer film. They started to update the, the logos. They had, um, whilst it's still set in, in, in hundreds of years ago, that there's a more modern feel to it a little bit. The, the vampires are different. They can walk about in daylight and they're immune to fire. Uh. But they do are still weak, weak to garlic and crosses. 
and you can stake them through the heart, or better still, as it's a hammer, where we decapitate them. That's always the preferred way. Um, so that was the Karnstein stuff, and that family continued to do more movies, uh, send it down the line. But they, yeah, they introduced, you know, it had its points. It had its good points. <laughs> <laughs> About ten of them in that picture. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I love Kate O'Mara in the middle. She's she's one of my favourites of all time. She did a lot of British TV as well, Doctor Who and stuff like that. And, um, but look, yeah, I mean, I think I could live a life of the undead if I was, you know, accompanied by these girls. It's uh, uh, well worth it. But it's a, it's a great, actually, a great movie. Uh, they really did a good job updating their their uh, their uh, look and feel. So, uh, and they certainly were trying to get the younger audience in more feel. sex, more blood, more whatever. So has anybody else here actually seen the whole thing before? I've seen an edited version. Yeah, yeah. There was edited for TV versions, which, yeah. which missed a lot of the bare boobs in the. Um, but that's Kate O'Mara, Ing Madeline Smith, Ingrid Pitt, Don Adams, and Yot Stensgard. What a lineup! Honestly, I think I have the shout release for this one as well. Yeah, uh, shout! I've got all the high definition trailers of all these. I've got the slightly less good ones but and they used a lot of the lore and in, in, there was Karnstein's mentioned in Vampire Circus which we're not going to cover today time wise unfortunately and also in Captain Kronos so it was Hammer's attempt to create a new a new a new family of, of vampire stories other than so Dracula. like Belmonts from Castlevania yeah every generation has to fight vampires yeah, exactly. Yeah, so every hundred years with the same bloody castle with the same family, and oh, what we've got vampires again. Well, you know, that's exactly like Castlevania. So, yeah, one hundred percent. So, um, contract negotiations at Hammer Studios must have been a blast. Yeah, I guess so. Casting the casting couch must have been pretty good. They had no central heating to keep them warm. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, great movie. Uh, definitely one of the 15 we felt, we felt was, was worth um, mentioning. But I think uh, the next one... They couldn't even afford list. socks. You think so? But yeah, nobody wore socks in the 14... Sorry, 1600s, 1700s. Uh, the next one is a Stone Cold classic. Probably my second favourite Hammer movie of all time. Uh, once we've seen more pictures of boobs. Well, yeah, there's one of the lesbian uh, scenes that we... Uh, I couldn't show the next... Clips after in hands, in hands. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> Next one is the devil rides out. Oh, this movie is so damn good. Oh, yeah, I saw this one last night. Yeah, this is I don't a kick-ass movie for various reasons. So let's have a quick look at the trailer for this before we. It looks super metal. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have. I've only trailer. managed to see it once. Uh, I just get a hold of it. My mom yeah. would have never let me watch a movie with the devil in it. No, no. I would have. I definitely had to watch this at after hours, as it were. So, the trailer. Best way to start a trailer. Rex, do you believe in evil? That's an idea. Do you believe in the power of darkness? That's a superstition. Now, there you are wrong. The power of darkness is more than just a superstition. It is a living force which can be tapped at any given moment of the night. Why? On one night of one year, should these people live in mortal fear? Why does the theme remind me of Johnny Quest? Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit, doesn't it? Oh, I know him. It's Charles Gray, the great Charles Gray. Oh my god. The goat it's one of the few Mendes. times Pistol League is The goat of Mendes. The goat of Eva Mendes. Baphomet? Lee has the Richelieu, who knows no, Lord Baphomet the to you. Power to the death. Eyes, 
Don't look at the thighs. Are consumed with fear. <laughs> For Tanith is now promised to the devil. Listen carefully to what I say. This is Makata, the devil's chief yes, disciple. Bond villain, Rocky Horror Show. Is leaving you. Slipping away. Slipping away. The Devil's Bride, a from best-selling author Dennis Wheatley's The Devil Rides Out, fills the screen with a special kind of visual terror. On your feet, quickly! Back to back, join hands! You will hear his evil. Quickly, take your clothes off. <laughs> you will feel his evil. Oh, no! You will see his evil. We once kept sight of his face. Yes, well. You know, now that I, now that watching the trailer there, I this is one I I do remember seeing. It's one of like one of the rare times Christopher Lee got to play the hero. Yeah. Or in that's this case, right. uh, that's right. He's yeah. actually more so the mentor here. Because eventually he has to like leave so the so uh the person he's He's, he, he's telling about evil can ultimately uh, be the one to to lead. He's the sort of Obi Wan. Yeah, he is. He's, he doesn't get to play the good guy very often. In this one, he's pretty slick and urbane as the good guy, but he knows everything about the bad guys. So he knows about the the, the devil worship, the Satanism. He knows the rituals. Um, yeah. How he gathered that information, well, <laughs> but he. It's nice to see him play that role, and he plays it beautifully. And this this had everything going for it. So this is 1968. Dennis Wheatley had written the novel. Satanism was becoming a big thing with Led Ze guy, bands like Led Zeppelin were just starting. They, they were into Aleister Crowley, all that stuff. But Hammer saw an opportunity here to, to get the rights to this and bring in a new audience. Uh, Richard Matheson writing the screenplay, who's a great science fiction writer, he did I Am Legend, he wrote I Am Legend, and uh, Stir of Echoes, Duel, Shrinking Man, stuff like that. I'm just glad they got Lord Baffinbet on the screen. I mean, he was the arch nemesis of my predecessor, Pope Les Paul the 22nd. That's right, yeah, yeah. I know, those two had a good, they had a, a love-hate relationship. Yep. Baffinbet loved himself and the Pope hated him for it. Exactly. Yeah, it's possibly my favourite Hammer movie of all time. Same. Yeah, Charles it's up, Gray. It's up there. Yeah, Charles Gray's brilliant as the baddie. I love Charles Gray anyway. I mean, he was in two, at least two Bond movies, in two different roles. One of them was Blofeld. Um, plus, he did the narrator in Rocky Horror Show. Uh, Christopher Lee said this was his favorite Hammer movie. On a number of occasions, he said it was his favorite. Uh, let me just add the pictures back in. Sorry. So. Um, and he looks so urbane there. It's a fantastic look. He just looks so good. A couple of the, the bit part players that were not bit parts, the guy, it was one of the guys that was in the, the uh, Pentagon uh, with him was Patrick Moore, who went on to have a big career in British TV. And Paul Eddington, another British sitcom actor, had a big part in this. Um, but things like satanic cults had not really been in a lot of movies, I don't think. And in fact, they did have censorship problems with this one. In the uh, Wicker Man in the 70s, were they uh, on the island? Were they Satanists or were they just pagans? They, they were, were just druids. pagans. Yeah. Pagans. They were yeah. druids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they were doing what they thought for good to, to review the harvest. And well, didn't uh, yeah. Rosemary's Baby come out before this? No, it was after this. Was I it think. after? Yeah, this was 68. I think Rosemary's Baby was more like 1970. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. That guy looks like Anton LaVey with hair. No, mind you, when did the Manson killings happen? Because that was when... 69. Yeah, 69. So it might have been around yeah. about the same time. You're right. He looks like he should be running a, a funeral home. He does. <laughs> yeah. A very sophisticated one, though. Uh, same year, 70s. All right, yeah, so they're, they're pretty close, um, but I do think this was ahead of its time. I mean, I think films like The Exorcist, The Devil Within Her, and movies like that owe a lot to this one. I mean, he really was a great, great source material, a great screenwriter. 
Uh, Terence Fisher directed it really well. It had it had fantastic. Um, it took itself seriously. There was no nothing campy about this movie. And I love that. For, I love it. Love it for that. Yeah, Hammer had this uh, this goal of like taking like things that other studios would joke about in terms of horror yeah. movies and kind of make fun of and taking it seriously and really exploring that side of it, which was really cool. Uh, yeah, they did. They never really, whilst there might have been elements that you could say were a little campy in some of them, I don't think they really were. I think they took their material 100% seriously and believed in it uh, and sold it that way. They sold it with by the acting and by the production and the marketing. There was no no attempt to say, ah, you know what, we know what we're doing here. But, uh, oh, I was wondering if also... that dress could be any thinner. I know. Let's, <laughs> let's enhance that dress, yes. Um, I think there's not a lot of material in that one. So, I don't know. I, I figure you guys might be shocked to learn. Shout Factory has a lot of these movies currently on sale. Interesting. Shout Factory loves Hammer. They do. <laughs> uh, yeah, they do a great job on the trailers. They've remastered them all on IDF. And there's Lord Bathmat. Well, the goat of Mendez, as they call him in the film. <laughs> Is it Eva Mendez? Which Mendez are we talking about here? Uh, but yeah, this this is is a beautiful movie in many ways. Absolutely love it. I know, Imperatus, you love it too. Oh, this movie's so good. Every all the performances by everyone is just excellent. Yeah, it stands it's... up well to mm-hmm. me. I pick that as my favorite. Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> it's Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> I was wondering how they got all the shots of the Coconut Grove. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was uh, any. If unless anyone's got any more they want to say about that one, the next movie it's number seven in this fifteen, and we will try and steam through, steamroller through them a little bit. Uh, is the second Dracula when we put into the list? There's only two we've got in this list. Dracula, Prince of Darkness, which is the third movie in the series. The second one didn't have Christopher Lee in it. That was The Brides of Dracula. Still a good movie, but this one brought Christopher Lee back, or he decided to come back. Let's put it that way. Uh, so it f- continues with his his story. So let's have a look at that trailer. Uh, present a video file. Here we go. At this lonely crossroad in the Carpathian Mountains. Though forever dropping people off in carriages in the same forest. Abandoned at nightfall. Somewhere in Essex. A local coach driver who was afraid to go any further. There's no driver. A coach with horses There's that a the road away. Past that. A table <laughs> laid for four. Was this kindly hospitality? Isn't your master joining us for dinner? No, sir. I'm afraid not. No, sir, because he's a blood-sucking vampire. He's dead. Why should a dead man be interested in entertaining guests? This is uh, actually a great sequence. I don't know how much they show in the trailer of it. Dracula, Prince of Darkness, King of the Vampires. It's very cozy years, coffin. His mortal remains were cherished by his faithful servant, awaiting the opportunity and a victim to provide the life. I love this. He, he holds the guy up and then gets his neck to let the blood out. Dracula. It's pretty brutal. Got tomato here. He had very tomato saucy looking blood though, <laughs> I have to say. A strange that, premonition. That's some Elizabeth Battery shit right there. Dracula, oh yeah. Their host is ready to receive them. He wasn't insured. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Barbara Shelley, Andrew Keir, the the regulars. He is already dead. He is undead, Mr. Kent. He can be destroyed. No Peter Cushing in this kid. one though. Oh, 
You don't need Charles. You don't need Charles, that's correct. <laughs> Yeah, third in the, uh, oops, move that, sorry. Third in the series. Uh, Christopher Lee doesn't speak in this one. He has no speaking lines. Oops, and that was because he says it's because he read the script and thought it was so bad <laughs> that he didn't want to speak. He was contradicted by the, right, the, the screenwriter and... Uh, and others who said, no, no, we always wrote it that way. So who knows the truth? But uh, Terence Fisher was the director and Tony Hines was the writer and he, he did lots of other movies that they worked on, so who knows. But it did start, although there's no Peter Cushing in it, it starts at the end of the original Dracula film um, as a prelude to this. So Peter Cushing's in it as a flashback. We, got, no hit. we got hit. Yeah, uh, we did. For violation. Oh, are we oh, down? Yep. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, F. Does it ever what, come back? I wonder what nailed us this time. Uh, we went, we went, um, we went so far. <laughs> I guess that's it done then. Doesn't come back. Uh, usually it comes back after a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Usually less than five minutes. Depends on, on who made the claim. Yeah, I don't Probably know. Automated. Probably, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I tested a lot of these trailers by uploading them to see if anything happened. Hmm. Uh, visibility, public, restrictions, none. Not telling me anything in the dashboard. No, we're still going on Odyssey, according to Vince. Oh. Okay, Vince. No, yeah. Well, we'll talk to you in Odyssey. So, um, Fauci's lab. That's what I was thinking earlier, Vince. You're right. <laughs> Fauci's lab. Um, oh, we're back. Right, we're back. All right, we're hey, back. Hey, Sorry hey, about that, back. guys. We have risen from the dead. I don't know whether. Yeah. No Odyssey. That? Odyssey kept going though. So you see. Vince got to see us talking about nobody else watching us. Lucky man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Vince got to hear all our secrets. Got to yeah. hear a backroom chat. So <laughs> I'm guessing I don't think it will be the, the photographs are just stills. There's none. Of, none of them are. We had to we had to sacrifice someone while we were while the stream was clean. We to come we back. did we sacrificed um, uh, Gary. That's why he <laughs> left the stream. Yeah. Oh, so but, you know, toe I cut off. I didn't have to do. Yeah, no, there, no, yeah, but you, was, you seem so into it. We just weren't going to stop you. He, he oh. just didn't have a lot of blood in him, though, Gary. You know, he was. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Christopher Lee uh, didn't say a word in this one. He hissed a lot, though. And I remember watching it years ago and thinking, "Why is he not talking? Say something for God's sake! <laughs> How so stupid is that? You know." But anyway, well, I think it's scarier when he doesn't say anything. That's what they say. Yeah, and he could be right. But I like the scene where the, the 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 body gets hauled up above the coffin and the throat is cut and the blood comes down. That's pretty horrific stuff. And yeah, but no no Van's Helsing. Andrew Keir plays Father Sandor, who's hunting Dracula there. So it's nice to see a real soldier of the the clergy getting stuck in there. You know, not just sitting in a church. <laughs> and. The other thing about this one is it used the same sets as the Hammer Rasputin movie, which was filmed at the same time. So it used exactly the same sets. I thought it looked familiar. Yeah. And some of the publicity stills from this, where he's given... Um, is it Barbara Shelley? He's given mouth-to-neck resuscitation. Mouth-to-neck resuscitation, <laughs> yes. Um, so so does, this, does this mean that Barbara Shelley is officially inducted into the Dead Boob Society? She is in the yeah. Dead Boob Society. There's, there's a lot of Every, these girls are in it. Everyone in tonight's episode is in the Dead Boob Society. The, yeah. <laughs> this is where Christopher Lee's about to give a Glasgow kiss to this guy. He's going to nut him one. Like this. And then the, the two swords forming the cross, which is the uh, ultimate way to 
get rid of them. But um, now, did Peter Cushing uh, sort of invent that in the film? Because he, he had he had done that in an earlier. Uh, he did Dracula it with a movie. shadow of the, of the windmill the, or something, it, or the like, shadow. It was the candlesticks. Like he was yeah. supposed to uh, yeah. yep. pick up a cross, and he's like, "Oh, wouldn't it be better?" Because he pulls down the curtain, right, yeah. and then uh, Christopher Lee's like. <sighs> And then, you know, because the sun is coming in and then, he, you know, Cushing jumps up on the table and then grabs the candlesticks and then puts them together. That's right. There was another one where he used the shadow of something, like the shadow of a, a, a sun rising and it caused a shadow of, uh, I think it was, uh, might have been a, a windmill. And he, he used that shadow in some way to, to destroy, he formed a cross. I mm-hmm. can't remember which movie that was in, but it was one of them, but. Now that's Mr. Angel's made a great point. Wouldn't work unless the cross is blessed first. It's true. Yeah, and not any old cross can do it. So those what swords are, must have been blessed. There's got to be an the, element of belief in there too. What one yes. of the many Hammer sequels really gets into that idea was pretty good. Where you had this young man, this young young man who was you know your hero of the movie, who hit, who uh, admits to himself being an atheist, being confronted with with Dracula and one of the one of the other sequels. And it's, it's it's a really good, mm. like, idea to play with. It is, and, and the point about belief is a good point, because I thought that you had to have some belief in order for any of that to work. So if you were an atheist, what would you do? I mean, I guess you could still put a stake through the heart. Mm-hmm. Right, because aren't Jewish vampires susceptible to the Star of David? Does that, that make sense? That I, canon, I, I heard that once. I haven't that seen canon? that in a movie directly, but that... That is something I heard at some I'm point. I have to look that up, yeah. Excuse me, but anyway, this is a, another one of those wonderful stills. I think we need to enhance that one. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's the second uh, Dracula one we put on here uh, out of the seven. And I think it was... Yeah, some of the later ones weren't great, like... Dracula AD 1972, for instance. <laughs> I can take it or leave it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dracula doesn't work so well in the modern era, I don't think. Uh, that's just me. Well, I mean, the closest like we a... was Fright Nights. Yeah, that was a creak. I heard a creaky wooden castle door there in the background. Somewhere. Anyway. So, uh, moving on. Next movie in the list. Number eight in the 15, The Curse of the Werewolf. And there's another one of those great quad posters. Beautiful, beautiful art. Absolutely love it. These pristine copies of these auction for hundreds of dollars, or if not more, regularly. Uh, if you can find a pristine one. Wasn't uh, this, this one, Oliver Reed's first uh, Hammer movie? That is Correct. I think it was actually his second one, but the first one we had the main role. He did seven, but they were all little smaller parts. Ah. This was his first lead, and the other one had just been like a walk-on, you know. Um, but it's got the dream team. Um, Anthony Hines is the writer. John Elder was just a pseudonym. Terence Fisher directing... Executive producer Michael Carreras, so very much the same people that involved in all of these. But yeah, Oliver Reed's first big role in anything. Uh, so let's. I wonder if we'll get stuck for the trailer. <laughs> I'm worried about playing the trailers now. I've never had a steam stream brought down uh, like that before, so I don't know. Should we roll the dice? That's your stream. Yeah. I mean, they're not strikes. They're just taking the stream down. So Yeah. We've got away with it so far. Let's give it a go for this one more. So Curse of the Werewolf. I'll keep an eye on this one. The Curse of the Werewolf <laughs> that was laid on a baby who grew into a man possessed by a monster. Von Romain. To this Spanish town, the night brought drinking and dancing, music and girls, and the moon. The full moon that turned an innocent man into a savage beast. The curse of the werewolf. A man possessed by a desperate need for love who found in Christina all the passionate sincerity of the tree. Dripping and moist. <laughs> well, it's hot in Spain. Will you marry me, Christina? 
You say you love me, will you marry me? Yes. Yes, I will. Shorty workmanship there. <laughs> yep. Speaking of uh, scaffolding. Suckers, you shouldn't have laughed. Yeah, this is another one of the greats for me. I mean, apart from Oliver Reed's performance, and he really is a is it struggling not to become this thing. You know, he's seeking the love of the girl, and he's he doesn't want to be this. I mean, he's been cursed since birth. His father is like a, a werewolf beggar that's been in prison and raped his mother in this prison, and he's adopted. But he doesn't. It's not. None of this is his fault. He doesn't even know why it's happening, and he struggles against it hard. It's, it's a great performance by him. It really is, and uh, a lot of pathos. Uh, and it was originally meant to be set in France, but the Hammer had been making a film about the Spanish Inquisition, and that one um, fell through. So they just moved it to Spain and used those sets, which is. <laughs> Why not? You know, I mean, can't fault them for that. But um, I, I didn't do that, that many. They didn't do that many uh, werewolf movies. Not really. No, was, no. Might have been the only one. Uh, was there only just the one? No, they did. And I think they did one more. Give me a second here. Uh, maybe not. I don't think they did many. I can't think of any others. Let's put it that way. Uh, Dracula, Casting, Mummy, Dinosaur. Uh, Curse of the Werewolf is the only one I can see listed here. So, yeah. Uh, but they made a good job of it. Yeah. Uh, can't, can't fault them on that. The, it looked good there. That looked absolutely brilliant, some mm, of that. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the crowd scenes and uh, music was fantastic. It kind of, although it's 1961, it looks a lot more modern than that to me. Just the, the color is so sharp and it, it's really good. Yeah, that looks, I, very, that looks very good for early 60s. Oh, great. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's uh, the production values, they may have skimped in, in some areas and probably on paying the actors, but the uh, production values were superb. Um, it was the first color werewolf movie that anyone had ever made and it was pretty gory you didn't see any of that there but it did suffer from censorship problems in the UK even though it was an X certificate because of the gore, a lot of blood um, Reed is brilliant playing Leon his tortured soul, cursed from bad, with bad luck in his birth uh, it's, a, it's a better werewolf movie than the than the Marvel one that just came out this past weekend oh, a yeah. million Million miles better. It's and he's a, it's, it's a tragedy. Uh, he's not. You don't hate him for what he is. In fact, it's the opposite. Yeah. You sympathise with him. It's very tragic. And Reed does a great job, and so does Yvonne Romain. And uh, can't think why they cast her. I really, no idea why they cast her. She has impeccable hands. choice in jewellery. Yeah, she does. Yeah. <laughs> Into the valley of doom. Um, enough enhancing. <laughs> but yeah, another great, uh, I mean, that doesn't, I mean, she looks, to me, that doesn't look like 1961, but that's, that's just, a, just me. Uh, great movie, well worth its place in the top list of any hammers and indeed any monster movie. Uh, so moving on. Oh, that's his father, apparently. <laughs> It's a pity Gary isn't still here because I was going to say, Gary, I didn't know you were in the Hammer movie. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like the guy at the start of the Monty Python show that used to run across the beach for two minutes and then collapse and go, it's... And then the Monty Python's Flying Circus would start. Some lovely I, I wish Brahma was here because I would tell him that's him if he got sober. 
<laughs> You've just given me a meme idea. Uh, I think that's his natural teeth. <laughs> it is. It's a British dentist, you see. But look at that. I mean, that's, oh, that's wow. pretty good makeup. I mean, they were limited in the transformation scenes because it all had to be time-lapsed and practical, but that is freaking awesome. And I think I mean, after... Like all samurai. Yeah. I think after Oliver Reed's heavy drinking through his career, he ended up looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the puffy shirt. Yeah. So next on the list, number nine, Twins of Evil. It should be called quadru- Quads of Evil, really, when you think about it. But, uh, <laughs> We didn't get taken down there, so we're good. Well, Vince's... there's triple cleavage on that poster. There is. That's triple triple cleavage. Uh, this is is another one of the Kernstein trilogy. I think I've, I've, we've skipped one. This was the third one, I believe, because you can't do them all. We had rules. So let's have this. Oops. This is where they were starting to, again, get to even more sexy. And there's sort of lesbian family bit going on here, which uh, perhaps is controversial. But uh, Twins of Evil, here we go. Oh, oh God. Tell you all. Have mercy on this poor, unfortunate creature. He wants to In meet the In old Gothic Europe, they had two burning passions, witch hunting and devil worship. And check it. Practice the black arts. They worship the devil. They're all slaves to Count Konstein, and he is their evil master. Do you know what I want more than anything else? <laughs> to meet Count Konstein. Thicker night dress. This one's freezing. An everlasting golf stop off. That's right. I never lost. They look alike. They're actual they twins alike. as well. Two identical beauties. The Collinsons. But one of them has the very devil in her. For you, all pleasure should be supreme. You must heave. These are the men they call the brother. <laughs> Seek out the devil worshippers. <laughs> like Quakers. Burning there. <laughs> and this is the sister who is about to enter the devilhood. Look, what do you see? Oh, we got hit. Boobs. <gasps> we are oh, the undead. There we go. Immortal. Yeah. Yeah. The devil has sent me. Yeah, we're Twins gone. Of evil. Peter Cushing just wanted to lecture on these guys. Whoever captures the devil gets to be on the Quaker Oaks box. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Man who never appeared in many other things. You will be He's got the right name, Damien. Unsuspected. Good and kind. Think of the havoc you can cause. I thought it was your sister that I loved. But now, I know. He's got the hots for both of them. <laughs> I don't blame him. Indeed. Which is a plot point, because he gets them confused at one point. One's evil and one isn't. Twins of evil. See it again, Peter. And a different team producing, writing and directing. <laughs> and produ- uh, no, so it's distributed by the Rank organization, the J. Arthur Rank, which used to be a euphemism in Britain. Ah, uh, you're gone for a J. Arthur Rank, have you? Yeah, but anyway, let's uh, <laughs> only for, certain uh, people with us, Vince. Oh, is, oh, we're down again. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah we're down again. Uh, v- but shit. Vince is still here. We've still got you, Vince. You've got us all to yourself. I think we'll have to skip the trailers. That's probably what's doing it. Yeah. Let's- I, I hate how YouTube does that because I mean it's supposed to be under fair use. Yeah. I mean, we're, it's, we're transforming it by talking over it, and you know it's just. And these are also movies that have been released decades ago. Exactly. If yeah. anything, you'd think that people who are re- still putting them out today on physical media be like, "Yeah, please talk uh, about it. We might be able to sell a few more of these." Yeah. Right. You know, there's a good point there. It could be the audio. <laughs> I think Soul Assassin's got it right. She's my sister's just jealous of all the boobage. That's right. <laughs> she ain't got none. Carry on biting. Well, actually, Carry On Screaming is a great Carry On movie. If anyone's ever seen it, a funny spoof of uh, Hammer. If she can have the tatas. No one can. Yeah, uh, exactly. 
Uh, well, we'll skip the um, we'll have to skip the trailers, which is a damn shame because they're awesome. Uh, I don't know back. if they're gonna let. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna let us back on this one. We'll finish uh, off for uh, Vince on Odyssey. It yeah. takes a few we'll minutes. Yeah, yeah, we're we're still uh, ticking up in the corner. Yeah, the the um, we should be okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you refresh the uh, the YouTube video, yeah, so there we back. go. If you Sorry refresh and it's yep. like stream not available, you know, then. So this is welcome back to the Vince Womack show. Um, <laughs> Vince on Odyssey has, has not had any interruption, um, and he has got to see all the because while you were away on YouTube, we brought all the nudes out from Hammer movies and showed them on Odyssey. So sorry, guys, you missed all, all the, good the stuff. ankles and elbows you missed. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. showed some of mine too, but. <laughs> Yeah, so I think we'll we'll it could be you're right, it could be the sound, but I think we'll skip the trailers and we'll just we'll just use the still images to, to we're we're getting near the, the last few. Um so let me get the um get the stills back up. Uh that's a shame because the trailers uh, we believe to be you know, they've been out there for 70, 60 years or more, some of them. 50, 60 years. They yeah, had to do a trailer back then compared to um, now. Oh yeah! Oh, they're dramatic trailers for sure, and they, there, they there, should... there was no fart horn. No, that's right. So yeah, yeah I, actually, I, I, I just I couldn't get over the fact that Peter Cushing would come out and say like, "If you want a Quaker, then you're not allowed to see this movie." That's right. Yeah, if, if you're not a lesbian twin vampire, you're not allowed to criticize this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Twins of Evil, yeah, definitely. They're definitely heavily leaning on the updated look. More sex, more um, hanky panky between girls. Not that I'm, I don't think the sisters actually did anything they shouldn't do, but um, there were certainly many other females in the film that may have. Uh, the, their, the story is they go to live with their uncle for some reason. He's a fanatical witch hunter. The twins resent him. One of the twins becomes attracted to Count Karnstein, who lives in that big castle up in the hill. Turns out, of course, he's a vampire. The other girl, and she gets seduced into that. The other sister is attracted to the school teacher who also helps hunt vampires. So there's conflict there, and there's confusion about which sister is which. One gets kidnapped, pretends to be the other, blah, blah, blah. And lots of boobs, so... And eventually the vampires lose, but not permanently, because there's always the chance they could come back. So it was the third in the Karnstein trilogy. Great fun, though. I mean, no one would claim this is, you know, um, Citizen Kane, but it's got better boobs than Citizen Kane. And, and that's what matters. <laughs> that's what matters. And it's a I lot I've never heard of that comparison it's... made before. <laughs> it's, the, it's the chicken of... Uh... Of movie, of movie compliments. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it was she, the, like the trailer chicken. where she says, uh, "You know, you know what I want," and I was thinking she wants a thicker nightdress because she's fucking freezing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I absolutely adore it. I think the whole all three of the, the Karnsteins are brilliant. I think Lust for a Vampire was the other one. Absolutely brilliant movies. Imperatus, I know you like them too. He's still there. No, oh, he's gone. He's off uh, for a fap somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, 90s. <laughs> Small time Republic's like, I don't know. Orson Welles was stacked. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, but not in the right places, though. That was the problem. Mm. Uh, yeah, the trailers are absolute gems. The, the hammer ones, because they show you so much good stuff. And they're, they're like a little encapsulation, which is what they should be of the movie. They're not full of stuff that isn't in the movie. I, 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 I find that if if you're looking for something different to watch, I mean, yes, obviously just watching a Hammer movie is always a good choice to do, especially for Halloween. But maybe throw on just like a playlist of some of the old Hammer films just to like yeah. get the atmosphere. Indeed. And, and as somebody was pointing out earlier, there are, Many of them are up for free on YouTube, the whole movie. So why the object to the trailers? I don't know. It could be the music. I mean, it's all automated. So Martin, uh, thanks, thanks for being here, Martin. I know you're, you gotta go. Oh, have a good night, Martin. 
Good, have a good night, mate. Yeah, it's always good. Always good to see you here. Later, man. Uh, so yeah, and there's the the Count Karnstein. I mean, they were trying to push this Damien Thomas guy, who I can't recall in anything else as being the big star. Uh, Christopher Lee replacement there, obviously, but uh, people still wanted Christopher Lee because he was still making these. But fair play to them. They they had a completely different trilogy without any of of the old Dracula stuff. Peter Cushing was still in them for the member berries, but you, you could have made them without him. I mean, there's as close as we can get to showing some of the stills that we shouldn't show. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is when I think he thinks it's the evil twin, but it's actually the good twin, or the other way around, I don't know. I don't think he really cares at this point. That's probably going to get that. both evil. No, no, one's evil and one likes the you good You might want to move forward, that because that might get us struck again, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, no, no, she's wearing clothes. It's not a strike. It's a five-minute fat break. For some reason, I got a picture of the mummy again. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I got to go backwards. Yeah, Kiwi Herman loves this one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all out of order uh-huh. now. Gives a whole new meaning to combat, Matt. <laughs> this is the only one I couldn't get the quad poster to go before the other pictures. So the next film, number 10 in our 15, is The Mummy from 1959. So they'd done Frankenstein, they'd done Dracula... They wanted to move on to the next of the monster, the main monsters, so they did The Mummy. Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, wrapped up, uh, swathed, as you may say, and Yvonne Furnu, who's rather hot. Terence Fisher directed, Jimmy Sangster written. Christopher Lee plays Karis, stroke The Mummy. Peter Cushing plays the archaeologist John stroke Banning. Stroke The Mummy. Stroke The Mummy. <laughs> I think I've seen that one. Hit the monkey and stroke the mummy. <laughs> so a bunch of British archaeologists as unwrap they do, it before you tap it. <laughs> unwrap it before you tap. It. Yeah. So anyway, opening the tomb. They're opening the tomb of Princess Ananka, and Karis is the guardian of the tomb. Um, Peter Cushing or somebody reads this scroll of life and goes into a catatonic state and horrible things happen. And then three years later, Karis, the mummy, who's the defender of the tomb, is in Britain looking for the people who desecrated it and killing them one by one. Why he takes three years, I don't know. Maybe COVID was on, he couldn't get a ticket to fly to Britain. (laughs) Mummies walk that slowly. That's right. And Yvonne Furno plays Isabel Banning, but also Princess Ananka. Anaxunamon! Indeed. <laughs> so I'm going to go backwards through the pictures because they were in the wrong order. But there's uh, Christopher Lee after a mud bath. <laughs> um, there was a lot. There was a lot of stuff trimmed out of this movie by the censors because some of the de- the, the killings were pretty brutal. And they trimmed a lot of it out, even though they gave it an X-rated thing. So there's there's probably a version out there with those put back in. Maybe Sound, Shout Factory's got it. Um, brilliantly photographed, though. I mean, it's a beautifully photographed film. They were they put a lot of effort, like they did with Frankenstein and Dracula, into the sets, into the uh, costumes. The Technicolor looks fantastic. Is that brown face? It is. It's brown face. I'm afraid to say it's more. Well, it's kind of you know, Egyptian face, sand face. <laughs> that's worse. That's, that's way worse. It's the Sandman. Oh. There's oh. Um, a love story made from a love story, oh, nice. really. Yes, because he thinks she's the. She is. She's the living reincarnation of the princess because they look exactly the same. So he ain't gonna kill her. He's gonna. He's going to protect her in some way or other. She is absolutely stunning. At, uh, uh, Yvette, Yvonne, sorry, Yvonne for no stunning lady. Now, uh, this was uh, this pivotal fight scene at the end between Banning and the mummy, where the mummy just stands there and lets him <laughs> have a go at him. He gets the spear. That was a Peter Cushing idea. There was a spear up in the wall in the set. He says, Why don't I just grab this and stab him with it? That look on his face, on Christopher Lee's face, is like, yes, let's get this over with. Go ahead and stab me. It's not like this isn't half my career. (laughs) uh, I hope I'm getting paid for this, is what that look says. (laughs) But hey, man, he'd 
I guess uh, he, this was the second monster he'd played because he played Frankenstein's monster, so he was probably getting a bit sick of the makeup jobs. Well, was, this, was, was this the second or third? Because he'd already played Dracula by the time. Yeah, but Dracula's not really got the same makeup. He's got the contact lenses and yeah, the fangs. True. He doesn't have to sit for 12 hours getting this shit put on him, you know? So. True. Yeah. And then, um, for some reason, a meteor strikes him. It's the opening credits to the thing. <laughs> it is, when you look at it that way, yeah. <laughs> He's not a stroke, just Bill's <laughs> So I've gone from boobas to mummies, according to Sanjay, yeah. Oh, there's issues here. There's clearly issues. but um, Mummy issues, you might say. Mummy issues, yes. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I was talking about that to your mum, Pope, because you're my son. <laughs> so... <laughs> So anyway, uh, I, they did, again, they did a great job. It was a big hit. It, it's, we're laughing about it now, but it is a fabulous movie. They didn't laugh about it when they made it. They made it as serious as they could. And again, it set a new standard. And yeah, there's been some good mummy movies since, but I think this holds its own against them. So next up, number 11 on the list, The Hound of the Baskervilles. From Probably one of the best Sherlock Holmes movies. I would say the best. Uh, I would agree. I, it's my personal favourite. Um, I possibly consider Without a Clue with Michael Caine, which is a parody to be almost as good, but that's a, that's a different story. Um, 1959, so we've had Dracula, Curse of Frankenstein, um, The Mummy, and now this, all still in the 50s. Uh, all doing a great job. This has got the, again, it's got the Terence Fisher directing, Anthony Hines producing. Uh, this one, was it written by Joe Sangst Sangster? I've got my notes here. Sorry, there's so many people in these films. No, written by a guy called Peter Bryant, who I don't recall writing any of the others, so slightly different writer. Um, but the rest of the team are pretty great. Big. So Peter Cushing... Sherlock Holmes, Andre Morello, great Watson. He didn't play Watson like an oaf. Like Nigel, uh, Nigel Bruce in the Basil Rathbone ones was a bit of an oaf. You know, hey, Sherlock let's barge in here and do whatever, <laughs> you know. Uh, Morell played him as a smart guy and a really good assistant. Well, why would Holmes have an idiot around him, if you think about sure, it? Sherlock, I think I've cracked the case. Oh, I know yes. why, because it makes him feel smarter. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I think, <laughs> You go ahead, Ian Caster. Oh, oh no, no, just the the Basil Rath. Rath yeah, the... yes, you've gotten it completely wrong. Good job. Yes, splendid, Holmes. I've cracked the case. I found the body. Yes, we've been examining it for twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and Christopher Lee is Sir Henry Baskerville. So good guy, bad guy, doesn't really matter. Baskerville's not. It's an interest again. It's interesting that he's. Slightly different role for Lee. He's not playing the bad guy, per se. And yet he's still playing opposite Peter Cushing. Yes. Because, like, any sane director, if you have two actors that have that kind of rapport, you have, you have to cast them opposite each other. Oh, absolutely, yeah. They just... It worked every time. I don't think there was a bad scene ever between the two guys. They knew each other so well. Um, and they actually, you know, the guy that isn't in any of these movies, movies, movies of course, is Vincent Price, who do, I don't think did any Hammer for some reason. But these guys appeared with him in other horror. He was a close friend of theirs too. So those three guys were, it's not just a cliche, they were close friends. Bros? The, yeah, they were bros. They were the bros of their day. Without the stuff, we think. <laughs> um, so... Great film. Uh, for me, it's the favourite, um, my favourite of any Sherlock Holmes movie. It got great reviews at the time. And Cushing, they actually wanted Cushing to do the part without the deer stalker and the pipe. He said, no, no, that's got, it's Sherlock Holmes. They ha he has to have those. Well, so he got them to put that back in. Um, and amazing and an actor demanding that they stick to the source material and have his character look proper and, yeah. and be the character how as unusual good, as good as the uh, Basil Rathbone uh, 
Sherlock Holmes where I th you're right, this is probably the best. I think so, and I think that it, it does very well with the, the hammer sets and the location shooting was on a, a moor, a real moor somewhere near in Essex, I think, or Sussex. Um, you know, you can see the smoke-filled, misty backgrounds. It worked really well. Again, atmosphere was the key for Hammer. And it had a great atmosphere. And they, even though we know, we've seen this story a million times, there's no real monster. There are things that people think are monsters. And they portrayed them extremely well in this. You know, a great Dane done up as a, a, you know, a big monster or whatever. And there's um, some of the on-set stuff. It's a bit fuzzy. I couldn't get a really good picture uh, for some of these, but uh, unfortunately, there wasn't so many stills available from this one. This is, um, uh, hang on, I got it here. Yeah, it's just one of those um, great settings that they use that looks so good for chases across moors and stuff. So. No, but you can't see the boobs though. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, great movie. Kind of doesn't fit in in a way with some of the others. It's got monster-ish things in it, but it's not really a monster movie. But it felt that it fitted with the rest and it had so many of the, the stars that were in the others. It deserves to be in this list. Uh, yeah, so you can see, you know, some pretty convincing physical, the sets and the and the, 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 uh, the, mon the dog there or whatever, pretty convincing physical uh, makeup and effects that, that make it really effective. No CGI. I mean, none of that shit, so... Yeah. Right. Everything's practical. Hey! Sorry. CGI is good when it's used sparingly and not exactly. as a crutch. Indeed. So, yeah, we're going to... do practical, it's better. Indeed. We're going to move on now to what's possibly my... That, and we've had... The Devil Rides Out. Which was one of my favorites. Did I say that? Yeah, the Devil Rides Out. Now we're going to have another one... It's possibly side by side, number one favorite, Quater Mass and the Pit. Yeah, I got to agree love, with you on that one. Yeah, I. Well, what? So, Imperatus, you and I love this movie. So, what for you is the? What's the clincher for you? It's a different take on sci-fi. It's almost like sci-fi meets Lovecraft. Yeah, a little bit. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Well, there's things out in the dark void of space that we have no concept of and it's far worse than what we could possibly imagine yes and that's a good point about the Lovecraft because whilst this is a science fiction movie I think it belongs very well on a list of horror movies uh, it's, This is and this one is a pretty horrific story when it gets going, it's a little slow to start with but once it gets going it's End of the world, bad horror. Um, adapted from the BBC serial. So, just for those who may not be familiar with the BBC show, Quatermass was a character written by Nigel Keel, Keel Keen, Nigel Keen, created for the BBC. And the first Quatermass serial in the BBC was in 1953. It was actually the first ever televised science fiction serial on any channel in the world. Uh, and they made several Quater Mass shows over the years on the BBC, all highly successful. In fact, that 1953 one, of which I think only one episode remains not destroyed, um, took the entire drama budget for the BBC for one year to make it. So hugely I successful Hammer bought the rights to do them all as movies, different casts and, and so on, and and make them as colour movies because all the BBC uh, adaptations are all being black and white. First Quatermass movies are black and white. Yeah. I think there were four serials, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. First two, yeah. There's uh, Quatermass Quater Experiment, there's uh, Experiment uh, yeah. 2, uh, <laughs> The Pit, and Pit. Conclusion. Yeah, there was a later one. Is that the later one with yeah, John Miles? In John Miles. Seventy nine. Yeah, John Miles was the was Quatermass. Um, I remember watching that at the time when it came. I was very excited to see that when it came out. So this was the first one in color. I think you said. Yeah, cause uh, the first two movies were black yeah. and white. Yeah, so the first one in color. Um, they still managed to fit a, the screaming boob, Barbara Shelley's boobs in there. So. 
despite the fact I don't recall there being a lot of sex in the movie. <laughs> the poster still captured that hammer, hammer look. Um, what year was this? So this is uh, 67. Okay. 1967. So they're starting to get into the modern era and trying to... Oh, wow. Modern up their audience again. Uh, Hulu, baby. <laughs> yeah, so Roy Thomas Baker directed it. Nigel Neal wrote the screenplay, the guy who wrote all the Quatermass stuff. Andrew Keir played the professor. It did follow the TV story very closely. So basically, it's London. They're doing some work in the underground. They uncover an object that's been buried, they have believed, for millions of years. It turns out to be an alien spacecraft. Martian, more specifically. I don't know. I can't remember how they tell that. And there are dead humans all around it, dead human uh, skeletons. So they find this creature in it, and but what they don't know is the spacecraft has an intelligence. The intelligence is malign, and it has a malign influence on people around them. It basically drives them nuts, and they go on a killing rampage. And obviously this is a big problem in a big city like London. Uh, and you can see it's got more up-to-date costumes. It's set in the present day, uh, 67 in London. Eventually, of course, the uh, I think there's a scene where there's an electric current gets attached to the ship by mistake, or it receives a big charge of electricity, and the intelligence starts to come alive. Its influence expands, and London starts to people go nuts, start to destroy the city. Well, it's as good an explanation for the knife crime as anything. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> it's still nuts to this day. Um, <laughs> Yeah, another great shot still of the creature itself. And I think it's a pretty freaking good job, you know? Yeah, he's a real looker. Yeah, it looks really good. I, I like I like it. And uh, so there's there's scenes, um, a couple of scenes in it that are fantastic, and I wish we could show them. One is the scene of Martians massacring uh, in the past, massacring the inhabitants of, of Earth or around them. Filmed with little miniatures and lots of... It's just fantastically filmed. So like a really horrific sequence. And then also the, the destruction of London in the present day. These are really well done, particularly on, on what would be a low budget. And then to, to destroy the intelligence, and you can see it projected in the sky here, one of the uh, scientists sacrifices himself by swinging a large crane over it to ground it and drain the electricity off and... Uh, Defeat it, so uh, very, very. So that's the monster grown to enormous size. Yes, yeah, it's received a power boost accidentally. Oh, like and Power it just, Rangers. Yeah, like kind when of. Rita says, "Make my monster grow." And if we look at um, Imperatus's avatar, we can see. Oh, no, yeah. That's actually Imperatus's true form because we've not actually seen him ever. <laughs> Finally, get a face reveal. His yeah, reform, uh, would drive us mad. Yeah. So I absolutely love this movie, and uh, I think I, I, I suspect a lot of people do. Um, as Fiz, Fiz Cho, Fiz Cho, Cho says, Fiz Cho, 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 Fiz Cho, Cho, I remember mimicking them with giant roaches. Yeah, they kind of look like giant roaches. Uh, like a Angel. hybrid roach grasshopper. Yeah. yeah. Um. I just love it, and if you get the chance to watch it, and I'm going to watch it this week again. I, I watched some clips, but I'm going to watch the whole thing again. Particularly hoping Roaches I can from find Mars. Out. I know yeah. how that ends. Um, yeah. It's a great movie. It's, as I say, a little bit slower on the build-up, which is fine because the payoff is is fantastic. And yes, Dildo, it does have an anti-immigration message for maniacal Martian intelligences. <laughs> they don't get to vote. And this is probably my number six favorite, but it's like really close to my number five. So, mm. cool. It's a great movie, and it's it's uh, Quatermass was a great character. Uh, I'd like to see more Quatermass actually. Maybe Quatermass and the pandemic would be a good modern <laughs> one. Yeah, he's definitely a forgotten character. Oh, forgotten, but in sci-fi terms hugely influential that first as i say it was the first televised sci-fi serial in history 
on any channel. There'd been small yeah. individual plays done before, but not a whole serial. So, so I'll fly the flag for Quatermass because I grew up watching that stuff. Uh, that was number twelve on the list, but we're not done. Oh yeah, that's um, Julian Glover plays the army guy, and this is him getting smoked by the uh, somebody or something. <laughs> I think this is a really great piece of makeup. He's still got a nice mustache. Yeah, good actor Julian Glover. He he's appeared in a lot. Of, he was in Doctor Who all the time and various things. Yeah, he's he's, he's retained the tash, which is quite good. You know. So we're now going to go on to another <laughs> more modern vampire and an unusual uh, unusual Hammer film. Definitely they were going for the zeitgeist. So Legend of the Seven <laughs> Golden Vampires from 1974. It's crossover with the Shaw Brothers. That's yep. right. Yeah. Shaw filmed at the Shaw Brothers. They wanted the chop socky. Dude, they even made him look yellow. I know. <laughs> to me, that looks green, though. <laughs> it looks like, green. But as uh, I say, the first Kung Fu horror spectacular, I'm not sure that would be necessarily true cool. without without knowing... Western uh, Kung Fu. Yeah, or, without knowing yeah, the Hong yeah. Kong genre. But um, genres... But they had to throw in the vampire bit in, so you've got your Peter Cushing. You're still there. He's still... I think he might even be playing Van, Van Helsing. Helsing. Yeah, he's Van he Helsing. He's playing That's... Van Helsing. It's... And it is set in the past. You think it's it's not set today. It's set like in 1904 or something. So he's playing Van Helsing. Back when they called them boxers. Yes. The uh, yeah. martial artists. That's right, yeah. They did, didn't they? Yeah. Um, yep, Asian boxers. Yeah, so this... It, but it's a, fun, it's a fun movie. It has a lot of problems, but it's a fun movie. And it, at least they were trying to do something different, which is why it's on this list. They wanted to update their material. They got in Roy Ward Baker to direct and Chang Chi did the, the action, second unit action stuff. All the, not to be confused uh, with Shang Chi. Not to be confused. No, Chang Chi. Chang Chi. <laughs> These costumes really look like, great. The one on the left looks like uh, straight out of Big Trouble in Little China. It yep. does. It has that feel. Very much has that feel. I think John Carpenter would be aware of this movie. I'm not saying he copied it, but um, the the vampires are in the golden masks were resurrected by Dracula, but it's not Christopher Lee plays them, and that's like a hundred years before the main action. Why the where they waited for a hundred years in between, I can't remember. But shot in Hong Kong at Shaw Brothers, interesting mashup of genres. It's kind of like glorious chaos, really. You get vampire shit, you get kung fu shit, you get boobs, you get dancing and whatever. It's just it's weird. It's like um, a multivitamin. You get everything you need. That's it's right. It's the, is, that, is that a boob grab? Yeah, that right. is a boob grab. <laughs> Secret it's martial the, art it, technique. It's, it's the reverse boob grab like this. <laughs> it's, it's a different technique. And then, uh, then uh, Peter Cushing is, I don't know what he's doing there. Um, is he pulling a stake out, bringing, putting one in? Perhaps he's writing his autograph on the back there. I don't know. But, um, he's pegging? Yeah, he's pegging. Particular color palette in this film as well. Lots of greens and reds like that. Now, they had a lot of action in it. It's funny because they're doing all this vampire shit and then all of a sudden they break into mass, whatever. And it's fun. And the martial arts action's pretty good, I have to say. I mean, it's for Western standards. By Western standards. Classic and Shaw go, Brothers. And going to Shaw, it was, yeah, that was a good move, going to Shaw. I yeah, this is pre-Venom mob for Shaw Brothers, so. Yeah. So I, I like it. It's a lot of fun. It does have its problems. Didn't have a great reputation at the time, but I believe it's it's worthy of inclusion on any hammer list and the reason it's on this list is because it's vampires so it fits just the monster what's even better is the shaw brothers version of ultraman yeah oh yeah <laughs> it's a movie called inframan yep oh, I've heard <laughs> yeah. it. oh I've, I've got boy, it boy is it bad it's something to behold uh there's no way that any of this is stereotyped no no you're for well. 
No, not even a little. Um, that's a pretty effective shot, though. And then we have this shot. Because this is just what vampire hunters looked like in the early 20th century. <laughs> Truly an enlightened day. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just wearing like a, uh, a wet tank top. Yeah. Ah, the Enhanced, civilized era. Hands. Julie. There's some H. kind of cup on the shirt. There's like cups. Oh, wait, this shirt. No, no, oh, no, no, it looks like there's some like an underwire in the shirt for some reason. I think there is, yes. I mean, she's not the biggest built of ladies, but, you know, I think she's showing off a lot for the era that mm -hmm. it's meant to be set in. Julie yeah. Edge. So it had a lot of fun. It's, it's certainly a fun movie. One that I had not thought of for decades until we mentioned doing Hammer, and I thought, isn't there one that had some kung fu in it? And I've not seen it since like 19. It was an early VHS rental. I remember seeing it 1984 or something, 85. But. Yeah, I found it when I was going through my uh, martial arts movie phase when I was getting all the Hong Kong movies. And I'm like, what's this? And it's like, yeah. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> yeah. And I really don't recall thinking it was a horror, mo a hammer movie at the time when I first saw it. I thought yeah. it was just, because uh, there was a lot of Kung Fu movies coming out then. I thought it was just another one. Gay boxers. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone that's still in the chat and hanging on after our getting cut a couple of times. And Vince, you're still hanging on there. Oh, we have Bookworm19 over in uh, Odyssey 2. So welcome, Bookworm19. Thank you for being nice. here. Yeah, I mean, that's it's great. We've I've got two people watching an odyssey thanks to both of them oh, nice. vince is in both of course but uh, vince is in both places uh so great movie give it a look if you've never seen it it's it's glorious fun and does have some great action i think peter cushing is a little bit out of place but hey, he was van helsing so what could they do he's probably thinking where's dracula he did have a look on his face in a few scenes of what the hell did i sign on for? that's right yeah okay i got two I'm contractually obligated to stab that's, Christopher Lee. That's right. I got a, I got a, yes, to stab Christopher Lee. And I did get a holiday in Hong Kong. Uh, next on the list, then, is... And we're up to number 14 now. There's only one left after this. The Abominable Snowman. Which is unusual on this list. It's the odd one out because it's in black and white. Look, just because I'm from New England doesn't make me evil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know about that. I think <laughs> immoral, immoral or immoral, but maybe not evil. That, that's fair. Yeah. On the so, poster here, Richard Wattis looks like he, sh he came off an episode of Star Trek. Yeah, he really yeah, does. Well, yeah. Richard Wattis was a longtime comedic actor in British movies like... The Doctor series, Doctor in the House, the Carry On movies. He'd always be like the unfunny straight guy in those because he looked like a he would play a stockbroker or a lawyer, and he'd have the, the little glasses and the yeah. He was always kind of, kind of a figure of fun. Very famous uh, for that stuff in in Britain, but uh, I had no idea he'd been in Hammer movies while well, he's in this one. But nineteen fifty seven. Still in black and white, um, directed by Val Guest, who was a major director of, of movies in the UK over the years. Uh, I don't know if he did many Hammers, um, but he did do a lot of, of uh, British movies. The British film industry was pretty strong throughout the 40s and 50s and 60s, so uh, I think one or two of the things that he did direct... Oh, yeah, so he did shows, TV shows like The Persuaders, which was a good show. Um, yeah, let me see here. Oh, he did the um, spoof Casino Royale, one of the directors on that. <laughs> Space 1999, he directed a lot of those. So he did a lot of British TV and a lot of British B-movies, but certainly a well-known guy in Britain. Um... I'm not sure whether... I mean, obviously, they'd already made or were in the process of making Frankenstein when this was made. 
and I'm not sure, I think it was a hangover from their old deals with uh, American Studios, because they had uh, an American star, so Forrest Tucker. Um, Forrest Sophie Tucker. That's a (laughs) musical joke. Um, Peter Cushing being the British lead, and it's fairly effective um, makeup on the uh, on the Yeti creatures. They tried to give it Valanga's tried to give it more of a documentary feel, uh, which maybe the black and white helped. It's certainly an outsider on this list, but um, the Yeti were depicted extremely well on this because they're not. They're monsters, but they're not monsters. They were only trying to protect their area. They wanted to remain anonymous. They didn't want anything to do with humans because they knew humans would destroy them. Uh, so they only killed to defend themselves because they were being encroached on. And I think that was portrayed quite well in this. And I think, if anything, the black and white makes it look better. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they did some location shooting in the Pyrenees, French Pyrenees Mountains, but most of it was on set. Um. I don't know. I, I think that um, the depiction of the the Yeti is, is is fantastic in this. They really, really do not want to get involved. And when these climbers and scientists sort of try to encroach in their area, they respond because they want them out. Leave us alone is the message. Um, and the claustrophobic, there's a very claustrophobic feel to it because the sets are pretty small. And I think that works very well. Yeah, a lot of cramped caves. Even the rooms they were showing in the monastery would look like they were really small, even like the main audience hall. Yeah. And because it wasn't that long since Everest had been climbed, climbed that was like 53, hmm. um, there was still a bit of a fascination for these remote areas, Nep- Nepal and the climbing of Everest and other mountains. And it was still... Like today, you can go up Everest on a day trip. I know it's not that easy, but it kind of feels like that, you know. Then yeah. it was still, oh my God, that stuff's way out there, and it's, um, uh, you know, it's remote and dangerous, and we don't know what's up there because who's been up there. So I'd like to say hail to legalize adult- adulthood. Um, one of our panel members on many shows. Um, legalize. Good, good hail, to see dude. you, buddy. Looking forward to you coming back on. I'm thinking of doing a the Who a Who stream number two Who stream soon. Maybe the next stream should be the Who. We did a Who special before. We didn't finish. Let's do a second one. So Legalize is a huge Who fan like me. Very knowledgeable about the band, and it's always great to have him on a a show. Um, yeah, the the older he's right in saying the older effects get a get a pass in black and white color would have exposed them a bit. So. So anyway, I certainly think it uh, merits uh, inclusion on this list as it's so different. It's it's a Passover period between the old Hammer, where they made more movies like this, and the new one, and the abo- new ones with the colour monsters, and the abominable snowman fits the monster category. So yeah, It feels a lot more like the standard monster movie of the 50s. Yes, it has more in common with them. So it's kind of a transitory period for Hammer. But I like it. I enjoyed it a lot when I've seen it. I've only seen it once, but it was it was very enjoyable. Uh, tense, lots of great acting, and um, ultimately a satisfying ending, I think, if you watch it. Mm-hmm. I just watched this a couple nights ago just to refresh on it. Yeah, I like the ending a lot. Happy ending? <laughs> For somebody. No boobs Sorry. in this one, though. Not really no. any boobs. It's oh, sort of a happy ending. Hey? So it's a little too cold. It's a little chilly for the boobs, yes, and uh, micropenes. And the, <laughs> my, um, the, the, um, there was shrinkage. I hell shrinkage. I think it's had a happy ending. I would check say chat seventies, private chat. Oh, hang on. Oh, Pope, right? Yeah, we're reaching the last one, but yeah, you got to run. But uh, no, so Pope, uh, thanks for being here, buddy. No problem, man. Thanks for having me on, as always. I love talking to you guys, and especially about... I'm not an uh, expert on Hammer in any way. I've only seen, like, five or six of their movies, but I absolutely love them. And uh, it was great to, uh, learning a lot more about the company and about, you know, the movies themselves. I'll definitely have to give some of these a watch. 
Yeah, no, there, there's some of these are well worth it, mate. Trust me. Work your way through the fifteen, yeah. and and uh, <laughs> then stretch out from there. As I say, most of them appear to be a lot of them appear to be free on YouTube. So, yeah, I I, I found at least four of them on here in the last yeah. couple of days. So, but uh, anyway, thanks for having me on. Uh, for you guys who don't know me in chat, my name is Pope Metallicus. I do all things heavy and metallic over on my channel every Sunday, except this Sunday because I'm going to see Judas Priest in Boston. Nice. And then, nice. Uh, yes. Uh, every Sunday we pick a band or an album and talk about it and just generally be jackasses to each other. So uh, hopefully you'll join me for that. I do have a Twitch channel that I uh, stream on whenever I remember I have a Twitch channel, which is never. Um, <laughs> but uh, hopefully you'll join me for that. I'm trying to put some more content up, content up over there. And uh, no, it's great having you guys. Oh, good to see you here, mate, and thanks for coming, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, man. And I will play you out with the usual. I can say it power, with a woman fighting power, the fuel by the fear in the random desire. Gotta love Sabaton. You've That's got nice. to love Sabaton. Cheers, Pope. So uh, another one of the Yeti shots, although I've got a feeling this could have been Gary before he left as well. But, <laughs> great, uh, great makeup. So we reached number 15, the last one on the list for today, because it's been a long show, three and a half hours, uh, with a couple of interruptions. So we're going to... I saved one of the best for last. Vampire Hunter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, not Vampire Hunter. Just about. Yeah, indeed. So, close um, enough. Close enough. So Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter, was an attempt by Hammer to bring in another, start another series, Vampire Series, this one with a swashbuckling edge to it. Uh, unfortunately, as it turned out, it wasn't a big hit and it was reaching the end of their movie um, movie lifetime due to financial troubles. And it's a shame because I actually like this movie a lot. Um, I think Horst Janssen that played the lead is probably a little bit Wooden. I mean, it would have been great later. Well, years wouldn't you be if you're surrounded by all that cleavage? <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of wood. Um, it would have been great to see uh, if it, the year, later years of Rutger Hoyer or somebody playing the part. But um, however, I did love the concept. Swashbuckling. There's no no Dracula involved. There is a Karnstein in one of the characters, so there's a little bit of a connection there. Um, and they definitely again up the boobs and. Um, the boob count. <laughs> so, this is a, he had a lot of girls in this movie. Not all of them vampires as well. So it's kind of getting towards a Witcher Game of Thrones level here. A uh, Witcher Game of Thrones type level with the boobs in the air. Uh. So this was um, one of his uh, ladies. This is, uh, I can't remember which actress that is. I had them all written down here earlier. But, um, but then you made a mess all over the paper. I did, yeah, so... <laughs> uh, it had a great swashbuckling feel to it though I think that's Caroline Monroe there um, yes. he uh, basically is just travelling the country uh, looking for looking for adventure Seems like although I do find it kind of funny that he has a katana yeah he does have a katana where he gets it from I'm not sure they ever explain but uh yeah, it's really not... Ramirez. Indeed, Ramirez. So there is no uh, Ramirez in it, unfortunately. That's what it could have done with. It could have done with a mentor character. But yeah, he's basically just travelling the country, looking for vampires to kill and bedding lots of hot chicks. That's pretty much the story. <laughs> Um, and I'm not exaggerating. That is pretty much the story. However, he does all of that very well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so therefore, it it warrants being in um, in this list. I mean, there are thugs. There are taverns that he beats up in thugs. There is mystical tests to to find vampires. Uh, he finds their weaknesses, uh, which usually he's stabbing them with a large pork sword. Um, 
It, it looks like there's a lot of cool like shot framing where uh yeah they, like one where he's holding up a sword and then in the reflection of the sword you can see you know the eyes yeah. of uh the woman or the vampire yeah and he's got a clever that's right and he's got a clever trick with a mirrored blade because obviously the vampires can't see that don't want to see themselves in the mirror but so yeah. he has a mirrored blade stuff like that it's, it, there's a bit of an origin story to it because they were expecting to make more, but basically he rides in, rides, then kills vampires, and, <laughs> and rides out yeah. again. Uh, he had a number of ladies to keep him happy. Uh, oh, by the way, this was written and directed by the great Brian Clemens, who's a fantastic British writer and producer responsible for all sorts of TV shows like uh, The Champions and The Persuaders, The Avengers. Um, absolutely brilliant writer. He did... Um, yeah, The Avengers was a big one. That was mainly him that uh, created and, and wrote The Avengers. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of stuff that he did. TV TV shows. I, mean, just, I can't even remember them all. You can through them now. Oh, yeah. There's too many to remember, but yeah, a lot of great 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s TV with the Avengers being the main one. But So he wrote and directed this. Uh, he obviously did was the casting director too, I would suggest. Um, so as we can see, um, things were getting hot and heavy for Captain Cronus. Carolyn best Monroe, paid, best paid person in Hammer, was the casting director. That's right. <laughs> Caroline Monroe, uh, gazing longingly up at something just out of shot. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the, the size back. of that sword. <laughs> and here he is um, practicing his windmill impression. He's, uh, yeah, I, I think he was a fairly, he was okay in the role. I think he was a little bit uh, wooden. So, um, yeah, the British Avengers, by the way. I'm talking about the Avengers, I mean the TV show with Patrick McNee and Diana Rigg and Honor Blackman, not the Marvel Avengers. Um, I know. Some people still get that confused when I say <laughs> the Avengers. Or the movie um, with uh, Uma Thurman and uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. I can't oh, remember gosh. who played uh, Steed. Well, that yeah, my, it was uh, Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes. Yeah, my, yeah, that's right. You know, my favorite that part was of the such Avengers a disappointment. Movie was, my favorite part of the Avengers movie, you know, aside from when Iron Man and, and Captain America fought, was the time that uh, that Sean Connery wore a giant teddy bear costume. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, for no apparent reason. This was part of my my contraction. Uh, part of my contractual. Uh, so there's, uh, I, I'm trying to find this great Diana Rigg picture this, from This the guy Avengers. looks like a more handsome Michael York. Yeah, uh, you know, like the young Michael York. He does look like Michael York. That is a great point. This is not the greatest photo, but there was a ver an episode of the Avengers where Diana Rigg dresses like this. And that's my favorite episode of the Avengers for some reason. <laughs> That's that's better than her usual skin tight suit. Yeah. So the shoot. Oh, there's some nude stuff in there. I didn't notice. Sorry about that. YouTube didn't notice that. <laughs> anyway, it, yeah, it does look a bit like Michael. It's a fun movie. They did pin a lot on it being a success. It wasn't a success for whatever reason. I think Hammer's Day was just done, and then it was. So that's the fifteen that Imperatus and I thought were worth covering today. We missed loads. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that Gary, before he left, said his favourites were Dracula, Curse of Frankenstein, Curse of the Werewolf, The Mummy, which we did have, Plague of the Zombies, we had The Abominable Snowman, we had Devil Rides Out, we had The Reptile, we didn't cover, Legend of the Seven Gold Vampires, we didn't, and then The Woman in Black from 2012, he loves that movie. So I don't know if you guys have got any particular favourites that we didn't cover. Well, uh... Remember, my list is I've got Dracula, then I've got one, uh, 1 million BC. Oh, 1 million years BC, yeah. Uh, then I've got uh, uh, Rasputin, the Mad Monk. Uh, good one, yeah. Then uh, then it's She. Yeah. And then it's Curse of uh, Frankenstein. Cool. No, they're great. She's a great movie. Yeah, I didn't... Uh... 
didn't have time to uh, to reach that one. I mean, you could do show after show on these. It's like oh, yeah. she and uh, some of the the, um, the female led ones that were very different and and uh, uh, didn't we didn't feel fitted into this necessarily. <laughs> but they're they're great ones. She's a, a great movie, brilliant movie. They made an inferior sequel, unfortunately, but they, yeah, the Vengeance movie. of She. Yeah, I've yeah. got both of them. So yeah, anybody else got any other ones I've mentioned? They want to mention? Yeah, Captain I got Clegg like was pretty list. good. Sorry, Imperatus. Captain Clegg. Captain Clegg. They they had a series of pirate ones. They had some Robin Hoods. Captain Clegg was good. Yeah. And good they movie. had a bunch of prehistoric ones too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the creatures uh, creatures that time forgot and uh, lost continent. Let's There's not another one. Zero when, when, dinosaur, when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Dinosaurs ruled the earth. I forgot that one. Yeah, Moon Zero Two is a sci-fi. I've also written down Vampire Circus, which had connections to the Karstein stuff, The Damned, um, The Man in Black, and uh, they're they're all good ones too. But there's just so many. Rasputin oh, was yeah. a good one that you mentioned. That's Wolf. Yeah. Darius, have you got any uh, anything you wish to? Add. I, I don't think I've ever seen any of these, <laughs> but but uh, so of the ones you've not seen, which are your favorites? Oh well, I mean, I love Frankenstein. <laughs> I definitely want to check that one out uh, first. Well, I'll, I'll look forward to you telling us about how you've not seen it next time. <laughs> Actually, I I liked uh I like their their take on the sorry, just had here uh the fan of the opera. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that, that was a great version. I mean, it kind of financially flopped for them, which was a shame, but it was a good version. Um, They've done a couple of Jekyll and Hyde movies too that weren't terrible. Uh, yeah, they were okay. Uh, Wasn't I've there seen a worse. Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde? There was. Yeah. We did yeah. show a, a Ralph Bates. We showed a quick picture of that earlier. Um, I got a couple of books I've been reading the last two weeks, 50 Years of Hammer Horror which has got a lot of great stuff in it. But actually, my favorite is this one, which is called Hammer Horror. I'll just hit the microphone on the way past. Um, Hammer Horror. This one's good because it's fan comments. So they take each movie and they have fans wrote in or phoned in or were interviewed about their favorite movies and the stuff, why they like them. It's a fascinating book. It's got a lot of movies in it I'd never... I didn't recall or had never heard of, so um, well worth it. And then the other one is, which has got, it's not exclusive to Hammer, but sex, Cinema Sex Sirens, it's got a lot of the <laughs> Hammer girls in it. So I won't open it because there's pictures in there shouldn't be seen. On I, I was about to say you can't yeah. open it because the pages are stuck together. <laughs> it's not as bad as the big boot. Bo- Book of Breasts, which I've got down there. Um, it's a, one of those Tashin books. So, uh, yeah, we could do Hammer, tons of Hammer. I don't know if anyone in the chat, and I, thanks to the chat for being here. It's been a long stream today, three hours, 41 minutes, way longer than we anticipated, but uh, you've stuck through it with all the ups and downs. If anyone in the chat has films that we, we particularly want to uh, call out that we've missed, please do. Um, oh, the 50 Years of Hammer book, sorry, I'll show you that a bit longer. Uh, it's a pretty slim volume, it has got some, and, and it's laid out in a particular way by a series of movies, and it's written by a, a guy who's a big fan, so there's there's a lot, not every film is mentioned in it, but it has got some good facts and, and stories in it, and it does cover a lot of the background of the stories that were used. So. Um, and then there's the, yeah, just a bit longer again, this Hammer Horror, Ian Carroll. Very interesting book. It's written by people, basically because it's taught people like us that have got the comments in it. Uh, yeah. So six sounds nice. Um, yeah. So great show. Thanks to everyone that's been in the chat in and out, Mr. Angel. Uh, Fischoso, Vince Womack, who's been uh, holding the fort along with uh, Bookworm19 or 19 on the uh, Odyssey side. I really appreciate that because uh, I'm, I'm going to start doing Odyssey streams on their own. Which we may do some of those because we might not get cut off so quickly if there's stuff we want to talk about or show. 
Uh, we've had Sentient Dildo, who's been here, Legalize Adulthood, our panelist friend, who will be on panels again for sure soon. Um, scrolling further back, scrolling further back. Uh, Soul Assassin. Uh, Martin Acosta Santana was here. We had uh, lots of other people. And for good, Canadian Spider Man. Hail to our brother, Canadian Spider Man. Nice to see you, buddy. Thanks for being here. And we, I do want to get you on these shows. I know it interferes with your work schedule, but got to get you on one of these shows once. Small Time Republic was here. Stephen Ransom. Uh, there were many others who I've probably forgotten, and I'm. Can't go far, but I can't go far enough back in the chat. So if I missed you, sorry, but thank you for being here. And of course, Das Wolfen joined us on stream, and uh, that was wonderful. It's good to yeah, see you. Yeah, thanks. Mate. Thanks for the invite. I appreciate it. Oh no, it's awesome to see you here. Uh, what are you up to these days? What have you got going on? Well, I have a stream every Tuesday on my, on my channel. Um, it's uh, four o'clock Central Time here in the, Central and here in the U.S. Um, and uh, which I guess is uh, five o'clock uh, Eastern. Okay, mate. I'll just uh, let's get your channel in the uh, let's link your channel in the chat. So just giving a second to do that. But yeah, keep talking. What do okay. you talk about? In well, um, it's it's uh, Gary calls it ADD theater, and so it's I call it the random stream of randomness. Uh, I talk about pop culture stuff, what's going on, you know, hit a couple of news items. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do some uh, tech stuff because uh, that's what I am. I've been in IT for 30 years. Um, and I do a little gaming at the end. So it's, it's you get cool. a little bit of everything on my channel. Well, I have just subscribed and I oh, would urge you. anyone else to do so that is here and uh no, I'm looking for the correct iron caster. Iron caster could, yeah. Thanks for coming on, mate, and we'll oh, get you on again. Don't worry. Thanks for inviting me. Like I said, I enjoy no it. No problem. Iron caster, my friend. Um, let's get your link up there too. Oh, let me see if I can help out with that. Yeah, I'm definitely subscribed to you, but I'm finding eight iron casters. Yes, yeah, apparently, apparently, it's a popular name. Apparently, yeah. Uh, that's why mine is a problem too. 70s rock fan, there's dozens of those. Um, but yeah, if you could ask me your link, we will put it up. And then you can tell us what you're up to. Well, tomorrow I'll be over over with uh, Pops uh, to, and Stone Loki to do a review for uh, a little chit-chat about uh, Army of Darkness. Cool. Excellent choice. Nice. Great movie. I think and I've got it, you here. In preparation for it, like I, I wound up watching one of the alternate cuts of it, and I was kind of surprised to see some of the like iconic lines just weren't in the director's cut. Like he doesn't say, "Good, bad." I'm the guy with the gun. Which, it's it's like an extra like, fifteen minutes of footage. That just kind of throws me off. I'm like, yeah, it's the same movie, but it's little changes along the way. All right. Uh, but yeah, no, I'll, be a good I'll, stream. I'll be on uh, with Nick Weiser uh, Friday for talk more, some more comic book stuff. We just this past week reviewed uh, Isom number one from River Riververse. Yeah, it was a cool stream. Good stream, yeah. Good one, mate. But thanks for being here. Yeah, appreciate it very much. It's good to stream with you twice in three days. <laughs> it's been a while, but now we've made up for it. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Yep. Uh, Imperatus, my good friend, thank you for helping me put the list together today. Oh, not and, a problem. Uh, it's nice to be able to talk on? to somebody when I say, you know, bring up Hammer Horror. They don't look at me like I'm crazier than normal. Yeah. What you got going on? Uh, not a whole lot this week. This week and last week, work's kind of kicking my ass, so not really looking to do too much. Thursday, I see what's going on about a gaming stream with Foulball Productions. He's been MIA the past few weeks, so that hasn't been going on. Mm. And Friday nights, I'm usually on, again, Foulball Productions show, the MF or Cocktail Lounge. That's probably the only things I got planned for this week. All right. Sounds good, Don. Um, don't be like me. Don't be overambitious. 
<laughs> a bit off more than I could chew with this stream. <laughs> I, could have I could have spent six weeks preparing and I still wouldn't have been good enough. But thanks, buddy, for being here. I always appreciate it, your support. Oh, anytime, man. Anytime. Fun. Oh, Ironcaster, I, you'd be happy to hear this. I started my uh, Ultraman. I finally nice. started watching it. And I started with the pre pre Ultraman. Oh, Ultra uh, Q. Oh, oh, Ultra yeah. Q, yeah. So is the, so is the pre Ultra across today. Uh, I just came across today to let you know that uh, the next season of the Netflix series is going to be the last one. We just got the poster for it. Yeah, I saw you posted that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yep. So I'm is the for... oh, pre sorry. Ultraman? Is the pre Ultraman post the pre pre Ultraman? I think Ultraman was was a pre op then. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mate. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just going to say, I, I really want to see the uh, Shin Ultraman. Oh, I've got it. I need to m make the time to watch it. But I am it's on my radar. And next year we should be getting uh, Shin Kamen Rider as a yep. bit of a, a sequel. book uh, One in that, that same vein. Yeah, I'm looking forward to both those. All right, well, thanks for letting us uh, know what you're up to, buddy, and uh, thanks again for joining. And that leaves my brother in arms, <laughs> my YouTube brother, my executive producer who helped fiddle about with things today, Mr. Danny. Eventually. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, always uh, having me on the show, even when <laughs> I haven't seen uh, the movies or heard the heard the music. But uh yeah, what no, are brothers, no, what are brothers for, buddy? What are brothers for? Well, you know, any movie I haven't seen is just an opportunity to watch for the first time. And so yeah. this is how I make lists of stuff. And uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, a lot of the stuff I didn't realize uh, how much of, well, I didn't realize how many movies had uh, Peter Cushing in them. Indeed. And, I did know um, about Christopher Lee, but yeah, no, I went through the list. I'm like, surely I must have seen one of these. And I went through this uh, entire list. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no. Apparently not, yeah. but uh, I could definitely, <laughs> I could definitely check him out. You know that Frankenstein one's probably probably be the first one because I love Frankenstein. I love the oh, book. Oh yeah, they're fantastic. And you know, I'm sure Peter Cushing's. Um, I'm sure the tax people weren't aware of how many movies he was in either. So that was probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, especially yeah the the tax people at that time. Yeah. But it sounds buddy like you're. What did you make uh, this year? Send it in. Yeah, how many Hammer Hurt films you were in? Oh, I can't remember. Um, sounds like you're getting back to doing more YouTubing, though, which is good to hear. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm using back into it. No, I actually, yeah, I've got a lot done in the last uh, month, I guess. Cool. Well, you're always welcome to do anything, uh, any streams you want with me or any projects. Just let me know. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, when people ask me, what well, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I just do. You know, 70s rock fan and... Uh, uh, the bad movie night with Slasher. Yeah. For, uh, for now. Good. Glad to hear it, buddy. So uh, f as for me, I'm going to go lie down after this because I'm exhausted. <laughs> I have my food just arrived. <laughs> no, i got to go eat and then uh, kill time for a while and then I'll probably end up watching um, Yelling at Park Cars tonight as normal on a Monday on Comics Division. And I get a couple of videos I'm working on and I think in two weeks' time, we'll do another stream. And I am tempted to do round two on The Who, because it's let's do some music again, and Legalize Adulthood can come on, and we'll just talk, talk about loud music. Oh, it's good. So, in, yeah, so until then, everybody, thanks again for joining. I really appreciate it. hope you enjoyed yourselves. Until next time, keep on rocking, and cheerio. Yeah.